Welcome all and welcome to our public lecture and launch of the Forum Asia Report on the Asian Commission on the Promotion and Protections of the Rights of Women and Children, ACWC, 10th year commemoration with the team of solidifying role of think tanks and civil society organizations in the advocacy to strengthen the ASEAN Commission of Women and Children. This public lecture is presented by the ASEAN Study Center from the Faculty of Social and Political Science, Universitas Gajah Mada, with the support of Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and Forum Asia. First of all, allow me to introduce the institutions that made this event possible for you. ASEAN Study Center Universitas Gajah Mada was established by Universitas Gajah Mada in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia in 2013. The research center aims to generate critical scientific research and enhance the positions and contributions of Indonesia in the ASEAN. The Asian Forum for Human Rights and Development, or Forum Asia, works to promote and protect human rights, including the right to development through collaborations and cooperation among human rights organizations and defenders in Asia and beyond. Its regional secretariat was established in Bangkok, Thailand in 1992, and since then, the offices have been opened in Geneva, Jakarta, and Kathmandu. And lastly, the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Indonesia, Jakarta. For more detail, please visit www.belanda.anda.nl. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the honorable guests and speakers. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Fadila, and I'm program officer in ASEAN Study Center. And I'm very excited to be here. I will be the master of ceremony for today's event. I would like to welcome our honorable moderator and speaker for today's event. Welcome uh, the honorable Madam Rita Serena Colibonso that would be our moderator for today's panel session. I would like to also welcome Ms. Rachel Arini Judistari as the Forum Asia representative. Ms. Agustina Pustulasari as the uh, Sensory Center UGM representative. Your Excellency, Ms. Sri Danti Anwar, as the ACWC Indonesia Representative on Women. Your Excellency, Yuyum Fani Pariani, as the ACWC Indonesia Representative on Children. And lastly, Your Excellency, Ms. Yuyun Wahyuningrum, as the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights Representative of Indonesia. Before we proceed, I would like to inform you about today's agenda. First of all is the opening remarks and launching Forum Asia report. The second session is the panel discussions, which is the main agenda for today's public lecture. The fourth one is the question and answer discussions and the last one is closing. Before we move to the first agenda, I would like to invite all the participants to join our live comment sections. If you have any comments or questions, please type your questions on the live chat sessions section. We will read your question on the question and answer session later. We also provide you with the e-certificate link that will be shown after the Q&A sessions. And lastly, we have several exciting news for you today. So please stay tuned until the end of our program. All right, now for the first agenda, we are entering the series of opening remarks sessions. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Dafri Agus Salim as the Executive Director of ASEAN Study Center Universitas Gajah Mada to deliver the opening remarks. Dr. Dafri, the time is yours. Eh, masih um, Before I start, uh, once again, I would like to welcome all, and then um, let me. Um, say a word or two uh, as the uh, opening remarks uh, for today. Ms. Samini Darsni Kalimutu, Her Excellency Hadi Mundu, hope, uh, hopefully that they join with us now. Ibu Igusti Ayu Bintang Dharmawati, Islam panelists, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you everyone for joining us today. The ASEAN Study Center of Universitas Gajah Mada is extremely pleased to co-host this very important webinar. We hope that this event can highlight the endeavor of the ASEAN Commission 
on the promotion and protection of the right of women and children and trigger fruitful discussion. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the ECWC. Throughout the past 10 years, the ECWC has endured criticism and scrutiny, but at the same time, it has also seen positive development and strengthened role in region. This webinar could not have happened at the better time. We continue to hear reports of the violence toward women and children in difficult times like this. The pandemic and the consequent call for a strict dispensing in the public places has further highlighted the importance of the promoting protection against abuse and violence, respect the towards uh, gender justice, the role we can play as a member of the society, and the further extent the role the ASEAN can play in securing the highest level of protection for its citizens. The mandate that is doubles you see here is the report is particularly important as the women and children serve as a sum of the most important members of the community. It is our belief that the women and children are a crucial foundation for empowered generation. In terms, empowered women and children will also lead the notion, uh, sorry, the nation to greater success in the future. To resonate the intent of this notion, the ASEAN Study Center of Universitas Yamada will be holding a two days event to launch Forum Asia Report, which assesses the impact of women and children protection in the region. To further echo the importance of this issue, a diplomatic meeting will also be held tomorrow. It is our greatest hope that this event will enable us to hear the views from our research analysts, the respondents who have so kindly made the time to be with us today. However, we see this event as a way to hear and appreciate your views, insights, and experience. We hope you enjoy a grateful discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, master of ceremony. Um, before uh, we start, uh, I would like to extend out my apologies because my dear friends uh, follow uh, this event uh, to the end due to this uh, some lecture uh, starting at 10. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Davri Abdul Salim, for the opening remarks. And now I will come Ms. Shamini Darsni Kalimutu as the Executive Director of Forum Asia to deliver the opening remarks and to officially launch the Forum Asia report. Ms. Shamini, the time is yours. Thank you so much, um, um, MC. Um, it is my honor to bring you today Forum Asia's Labor of Love, our report on ACWC Plus 10, assessing the Commission's impact on protecting women and children's rights in ASEAN, published with the support of the Solidarity for ASEAN People's Advocacy, SAPA, with whom it is always a pleasure to partner up with. Our thanks also to the ASEAN Study Center of Universitas Kajamada, Indonesia, and to the Embassy of the Netherlands for supporting the event today. For the past nine years, we have issued an annual assessment of the performance of two ASEAN human rights mechanisms, the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, AICHA, and the ASEAN Commission on the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Women and Children, ACWC. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the creation of the ACWC, and we are therefore presenting a review of the ACWC assessing its mandate and function in promoting, protecting, and advocating for the rights of women and children in the region and making recommendations for the future. Today, we gather to discuss the report's findings and recommendations in the hopes of strengthening 
the terms of reference of ACWC, as well as to establish a high-level advocacy group focused on working to strengthen the ACWC TOR for the creation of a well-coordinated action or advocacy plan that will ultimately enhance the protection of women and children in ASEAN member states. The production of this report coincides with the COVID-19 pandemic, as we know, which brought to the forefront issues such as violence against women and at children and their linkages to public health, politics, security, and the economic underpinnings of the ASEAN community. Alongside other challenges in the region, including shrinking civic space and specific human rights crises, it remains to be seen whether the ACWC will be able to adapt into a stronger human rights mechanism, particularly in fulfilling its protection mandate going forward. But lessons from the past decade reveal the potential for the ACWC and its partners to tackle these challenges in the pursuit of stronger promotion and protection of the rights of women and children in ASEAN. And this is where hope lies. I would like to take the opportunity to highlight just one key finding of the report and its related recommendations for you here today. Specifically, the overlap between the promotion and the protection mandates of the ACWC. Our report has found that member states wary of their oppressive laws, policies, and practices, and undergoing independent scrutiny have successfully pushed for the ACWC as well as ICHA to focus on the promotion aspect of their mandates at the expense of the protection aspect. Promotion here is understood as theoretical activities, while protection is namely researching and documenting actual human rights situations and violations in member states, apart from introducing intervention strategies to stop these violations. Thus, we see in the report that 65% of respondents agree at various levels that the ACWC has performed satisfactorily to protect human rights and fundamental freedoms of women and children in ASEAN. But when asked about ACWC's direct contribution to change in national policies, this remains unclear. The ACWC's work on standard setting, including in drafting the Declaration of the Protection of Children from All Forms of Online Exploitation and Abuse in ASEAN, is a notable achievement. So is the ACWC's regional guidelines and procedures to address the needs of TIP or trafficking in persons victims for its protection work. The implementation of these documents remain uncertain and therefore, the protection functions of the ACWC is effectively disabled. Thus, Forum Asia recommends that the ACWC not only revise its terms of reference to have a clear mandate for documenting and addressing violations in and by ASEAN member states, but pending the full revision of its TOR to exercise innovation and creativity in finding ways to fulfill its protection mandate. This can include intervening as amicus curiae or friends of the court in cases involving violations of the rights of women and children as provided in the CEDAW and the CRC as a means of promoting the implementation of those treaties, which is mandated in Article 5.1 of the ACWC's TOR. Another method, if we may suggest, is to advocate with individual ASEAN member states and ASEAN as a whole including publicly on behalf of specific individual women or children or groups of women and children whose rights are being violated as mandated in Article 5.4 of the TOR. Relatedly, we call upon ASEAN member states to allocate resources to the ACWC to support innovative and creative ways to fulfill its protection mandate pending a revision of its TOR. These are few of among 25 recommendations and sub-recommendations that we are making to the ACWC in this report. I am sure that the upcoming panel discussion will unpack all of these in greater detail. I wish the panel discussion a very successful um, conversation and um, as you unpack these different ideas and the different findings of the report. With that, it is my pleasure to officially launch Forum Asia's report on ACWC Plus 10 
assessing the commission's impact on protecting women and children's rights in ASEAN. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Shamini, for having the opening remarks, and I have officially launched the report of the Forum Asia. All right, moving on to the next agenda. Today, we are honored to have Madam Rita Serena Kolibonso, Indonesia ACWC representative for women's rights as the moderator of today's event. Madam Rita Serena Kolibonso had accomplished four and a half years terms of service as the representative of Republic of Indonesia to the ASEAN Commission on the Promotion and the Protections of the Rights of Women and Children, particularly on women's rights, from 2010 until 2014. She's a human rights lawyer by professional, and she graduated from Faculty of Law of University of Indonesia in 90, 1988. She gained her Master in Laws in International Law and Commercial Law from Faculty of Law of Sheffield, University in the United of Kingdom. Over the past 24 years, she has earned a reputation as a leading human rights lawyer through her leaderships of working and educating her commitments as a human rights defender, legal drafter, legal consultant, and women's rights activist in Indonesia since year 1986. She awarded the British Sevening Award in 1986, and she has been active in advocacy works at the various local, national, and regional level civil society organizations and human rights as well as women's rights organizations and networks among others at Jakarta Legal Aid Institute as a founder of Asosiasi Perempuan Indonesia Untuk Keadilan called APIC or Indonesia Women Associations for Justice. A founder of the founder of Eliminations of Violence Against Women called Mitra Perempuan Women's Crisis Center as a former vice chairperson of the National Commissions on Anti-Violence Against Women from 1998 until 20, 2003. She also as a founder of the Indonesia Women's Health Foundations and Indonesia Bar Associations called Peradi. Without further ado, I welcome Madam Rita on the floor. Madam, the time is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Fadila. Good morning, distinguished guests, uh, excellency, panelists, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's an honor for me to be here, especially uh, as a moderator of the, uh, the, this public lecture today. After the launching of the Forum Asia Report on the ACWC 10 years commemorations. Congratulations to ACWC and also to the Forum Asia for uh, the report. I'm sure it is not the first report produced by the Forum Asia, uh, especially uh, regarding to the ACWC performance. And thank you to the Asian uh, Study Center, uh, Gajah Mada University, for organizing this event together with the Forum Asia, with the support of the uh, Netherlands Embassy. The topic of this public lecture and discussions uh, under the title of the solidifying the role of the think tank and CSO in the advocacy to strengthen the ASEAN Commission on the promotion of the protection of the rights of women and children, in short, ACWC, uh, yes, to strengthen the ACWC. So uh, we will here uh, have uh, uh, five distinguished uh, panelists this morning. And uh, first of all, I would like to introduce them. Uh, I think all of them is the Indonesian panelists. Uh, uh, and then uh, the first, uh, sorry, if I, I have to uh, read the the short bio of the panelists. The first panelist will be uh, Miss Rachel Aini, uh, Judistan. Judistan, sorry, this is the that's a typo. 
to this study. C is the Yes, she is the East Asia and ASEAN manager for the Asian Forum for the Human Rights and Development or, or Forum Asia. And prior to that, she joined the ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights as a program manager, where she works with the parliamentarians to promote human rights issue in the region. She had previously worked with the ASEAN Pacific Research and Resource Center for Women or ERO, uh, and for many have a many contribution in the region she has appointed as Frida Young Feminist Fund Advisor uh, for 20, 2010 to 2014 and also Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB and Malaria board member, Aero board member and joined the Indonesian government delegation in the United States State United Nations Commission on the Population and Development the 45th and 47th session. So uh, good morning, Ibu Rachel, and welcome to you. And the second, sorry, the second uh, panelist that I would like to introduce you is Mother, Her Excellency, Madam Sri Danti Anwar. She is our Indonesian representative to the ACWC for women's rights. She is currently known as a senior advisor to the Minister for Family Development. And she also acting the beauty minister for gender equality at the Minister of Women Empowerment of Indonesia. And uh, before that, she was the ministerial secretary of the minister on women empowerment and child protection. As a top level uh, bureaucrat in Indonesia policy making and coordinating agency, uh, Madam Danti has significant influence to the country policy making process in the area of women empowerment and child protection. So uh, good morning Ibu Danti, Madam Danti, and welcome to the to this panel discussion. Then I would like to introduce our third panelist. Uh, Her Excellency, Madam Yuyung Fahmi Pariani. She is our Indonesian representative to the ACWC for children's rights. She is currently independent emergency specialist and consultant for child protection and an external member of the emergency roster of Plan International. She, she has worked as an emergency special, specialist and consultant on child protection for Plan International Nepal in 2015 with her specific assignment on earthquake disaster. She spreaded the conduct of capacity building trainings and job mentoring for the community staff and uh, mob uh, mobilizer of Plan International. So she, she has been actively involved as a facilitator in the Child Care Indonesia Network, which supported by UNICEF and the Smeru Research Center. So I think she she's, she will be joining us, but I will welcome her uh, to join this uh, panel session as well. And then our sorry. Sorry, I have, uh, I cannot see the, the view of Ibu uh, for our fourth panelist, but I will uh, let you know so, soon. Apolog apology, uh, Madam Yun, for uh, this uh, technical problem, but uh, 
uh, I will introduce uh, Her Excellency Madam Yuyum Wahyuning Ningrum as a uh, Indonesian uh, representative to the ICER, the ASEAN Intergovernmental uh, Commission on Human Rights, uh, and she, uh, I welcome her to to join this panelist, this panel discussion, the, and I will uh, let you know. I will introduce her spe specially later after uh, before she uh, deliver uh, uh, her speech. So uh, good morning, Ibu uh, Ibu Yuyun, uh, my friend, and nice to meet you today. And then our fifth panelist. Uh, uh, our distinguished panelist is uh, Madam Agustina Kustulas Sari. She is a fellow at the ASEAN, ASEAN Study Center and also a lecturer at the Department of Public Policy and Management of Faculty of Social Political Science University, Gajah Mada University. Her research interests include includes the educational policy and gender studies. She received a Fulbright Dictic Grant and is currently pursuing her PhD in educational policy and leadership at SANI at Albany, United States. So that's all the introduction and I welcome Ibu Agustina. Good morning, Ibu. Uh, welcome to the panelists. Good morning, Session. Gurita. Thank you for the introduction. Yes, so I have to see. Okay, so, sorry, this is a very challenging, you know, to to use all of the the instruments uh, by yourself. Very challenging. So that's great, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I already uh, introduced uh, all our uh, uh, excellent panelists. Uh, from Indonesia to talk about ASEAN, specifically talking about the ASEAN uh, Commission on the Promotion of the Right of Women and Children. So as you know that all uh, in every uh, 10 ASEAN member states, they have two representatives for the ACWC, the first one on, on the, for the women's side and then the second one for the Children's right. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, just the information. So uh, in short, I would like to uh, invite the our first panelist who will be talking in uh, maximum in fifteen minutes uh, to uh, to talk about the findings of the Forum Asia report on the ACWC assessment uh, after the 10 years establishment of the OPWC and recommendation for the, the next decade of the SCWC service. So uh, I'm proud to invite uh, my friend, Ms. Rachel Aini Yudhistan. Madam, you have the floor. Um, uh, thank you so much, Gurita, uh, for the opportunity. And also, I would like to welcome everyone uh, to this very important session. Um, with the help from a friend uh, uh, from UGM, it would be really good if you can also flash my presentation. Um, and um, earlier, Shamini have officially launched the, our labor of love. Basically, this is our eighth report on the performance of uh, ASEAN Human Rights Mechanism. But because this is a 10 years anniversary of uh, ACWC, we have a dedicated uh, year uh, to craft the report and also um, assessing the impact uh, of the body as well as uh, recommending uh, key uh, action points for the betterment and improvement of the bodies. Um, uh, may I proceed or wait for the presentation? Um, 
plans from UGM, may I proceed? Okay, so the presentation is here. Thank you so much. Um, so the report will be available on our uh, website. Uh, I really encourage you to um, visit our website, forumasia.org or human rights in ASEAN.info to get um, the online versions of the report. Uh, next, please. Um, so the content of my presentation. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the content of my presentation will cover four um, areas. One, I will like to share with you the methodology and objectives why we are doing the report. Secondly, is uh, the findings of the report itself. And thirdly, case studies uh, utilizing the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that hit uh, our region uh, since March, as well as a uh, key recommendation for HWC as well as uh, the state. Uh, next slide, please. So the objectives um, of why we are doing our aid report is basically to assess the impact and challenges as well that ACWC experienced in the past 10 years. And building uh, on that, we would like to provide two recommendations to the body and um, member states. The methodology that we are using is having expert meeting, um, consisting of uh, women and children's activities, as well as the WC current representatives and uh, former representatives um, in February. And then after that, we did an online survey, which being translated into Bahasa Indonesia and high language. Um, and we also have semi structured interview with these representatives. Uh, from CS code, ACWC, Charter Club, and Formula Labs, and Secretary of the Army Organization. We also do the review um, uh, of the um, official uh, report and information as well as the news, but uh, we have to admit that it's very difficult for us to get like academic journal on the evaluation of the CWC. Next slide, please. Um, so the World Economic Forum uh, report mentioned that none of us will see gender equality in our lifetime, so nor likely will many of our children. And that's sobering findings of their report because we uh, we will only achieve gender parity uh, in the upcoming 100 years. And this is a very um, um, resounding uh, and sad reality. And therefore, um, 40 percent of Southeast Asia women and children experience violence uh, and last year in Indonesia alone 90 percent of rape cases remain unreported and because of this we really need to have a strong uh, regional mechanism uh, to protect women of women's rights. Next please. Um, as uh, Madam Rita has mentioned um, yeah. the ASEAN Commission on the Protection of Women and Children created this 10 years ago um, and I would like to highlight uh, the importance uh, of uh, CSO's participation in the process. Uh, our aspiration to have strong and effective uh, bodies to protect women and children's rights um, are to address um, the human rights violations and discriminations that presently affect in our life. Um, and ACWC's term of vision is actually um, respecting universality, human rights, and fundamental freedom. And uh, although it also includes balancing rights and responsibilities in the execution of religion and social cultural norms, but that sometimes get the natural students uh, and children's rights. Uh, AWC has 16 um, functions, like mandate, I'm sure that uh, our uh, um, honorable representative will be able to share more about that, but I'm just highlighting the key, key functions. Uh, one is to advocate on behalf of women and children, as well as the most vulnerable, as well as preparing civil and CRC project reports uh, and implementing the concerning participation of civil and CRC. Um, so that's embedded within the uh, term of reference of the CWC itself. Next slide, please. Uh, so when we are doing um, the review, uh, the yardstick that we are using is um, the Paris Principles, which is documents um, to adhere uh, effectiveness and independence of human rights mechanism. We also use the um, uh, OACHR UN um, standard on regional mechanism as well as 
benchmarking address the uh, regional women tech commissions in different continents and regions like the African Union, uh, Latin America, etc. So the four yardstick that we are using is basically standard set in institutional building. Uh, second is responsiveness and implementation of um, the activity plan to protect women uh, and children's rights. The third uh, indicator or yardstick that we are using is independence, public transparency, and accountability. And the fourth um, is stakeholder engagement, which also includes the efforts of the participation. Next slide, please. <laughs> uh, on standard setting and institutional building, if you uh, can see the graph uh, there, um, it's basically the background of the GW Shadow Method in 2019, and 67% of it are representing like a government um, and um, only like 17 percent um, are coming from academia background uh, and less than um, 10 percent which is percent uh, is coming from civil society background um, so in terms of uh, institutional building um, the OPEC elections and appointment process is something um, that we need to address because until now, only Indonesia and Taiwan have an open selection process uh, for selecting the HWC representative. Also, there's a lack of fiscal independence. Um, I think um, resources is very political, and we can see that um, the lack of commitment from the member states as well as the donors to support the work of SWC is a very problematic because um, it's hindering their ability um, to do activities. Uh, also, um, there has been a finding within our um, structure interviews uh, about internal structure and decision making process. Uh, because the body consisted of plenty representative, um, I, I can imagine how um, difficult it is to achieve a consensus in family manner. However, given the um, significance of the issues that they are looking at, it would be really good to have uh, an alternative way to come up with um, a decision making uh, process in a faster way. Um, also, the protection mandate is uh, considerably weaker compared to other uh, regional human rights, uh, regional human rights mechanism. Uh, but we see uh, in terms of standard setting, actually, SWC achievement is the creation of the regional plan of action uh, to eliminate violence against women and children. Ibu Rita here was uh, there. Um, and also encouraging to export participation. So it can be um, utilized as one of the key um, milestones uh, and also um, mechanism on how um, social society organization, women and children uh, can be enriched in decision making process. However, uh, according to the midterm review uh, by the itself, RPS on um, elimination of violence against children have not translated international action, which become uh, the witness of the standard setting. And for the women, um, there are um, a perception of disjunction uh, between uh, this standard setting with realities on the ground. And it is to happen because uh, there are lack of social assistance and support for survivors. Um, and um, the uh, mentioning of um, say social, cultural, and religion are perceived um, uh, to be detrimental um, in the implementation of the case. Uh, next, please. Okay, so I will try to uh, talk uh, louder um, uh, to make sure that everyone can hear me. The second indicator is responsiveness and implementation of plan to protect women and children's rights. So SWC work uh, with using work plan, uh, and currently they are on second work, uh, work plan from 2016 to 2020. However, on uh, until today, only 20. 5% of activities in their work plan were implemented. The number are uh, lower and uh, we understand it happened because of many challenges um, that being faced by the commissions. However, we also see a skewed distribution of work plan activities because uh, the heavy reliance to uh, representatives from Indonesia, Philippines, and Thailand to implement activities. Um, the 
survey and also interview as well as desk review also found the inaction on the Hingga crisis, the extrajudicial killing and harassment to women, human rights defenders overall. Um, and there's also specific mention on um, inability of their body to advocate um, on behalf of marginalized groups, including girls. However, I think earlier this year, or we heard uh, AWC plan to do more work on health marriage, uh, but um, given the pandemic, uh, perhaps it's also affecting their ability to uh, uh, address the issues. Um, and the interviews also found that uh, the body tends to avoid sensitive topics such as uh, transgender, um, the sexual practice of and rights of uh, people living with HIV, um, sex worker issues, etc. Um, and um, although the mandate of this body is to assist um, member states um, uh, to report CDO and CRP, uh, but um, currently there is still lack of engagement given the un uh, clarity of uh, national mechanism. Uh, however, as Shamini mentioned, we also appreciate some of the milestones that ACWC have created, uh, such as the declaration of the protection of children uh, from all forms of online exploitation. I think it's very responsive with um, the current digital reality that we are in. Um, and also there are campaign on traffic in person and how uh, the nexus with um, freedom of assembly, uh, sorry, freedom of, uh, sorry, the nexus between trafficking in person and violence uh, against women, um, and uh, evidences work on women's peace and security, uh, become one of the milestones uh, that we want to address as well. However, um, when we compare um, the ASEAN women's and children's protection uh, mechanism with other regional, mechanisms such as in inter-American commissions, the African uh, Commission, Gracio, um, even EU, um, there is a very significant absence of complaint mechanism that we don't have in ASEAN and also in other regional uh, bodies to protect women and children's rights, um, the representatives can do country missions. Um, and in most of the mechanism, they also have issued guidelines to protect women and human rights defenders. Um, and in ASEAN level, we don't even have uh, discussions to address women and human rights defenders itself. So definitely it's a um, uh, backslide and something that can should be addressed um, in a timely manner. Um, and uh, despite of uh, requesting uh, HWC uh, to start uh, looking at the at re revising the term of reference. However, um, I think um, ICWC can adopt a creative approach on the protection mandates. Um, as Shamini said, um, providing a microscopia or perhaps providing legal and advisory um, opinion to member states, um, especially on the a victim protection uh, can be something that um, can be prioritized by the body. Next uh, indicator is on independent public um, transparency and uh, accountability. Uh, can you go next, please? Uh, next slide, please. Yes, this one. Okay, so when uh, we are asking um, the ASEAN people about um, how they perceive um, public engagement of the CWC. 65% of respondents um, say that uh, they have not been engaged uh, publicly by the uh, CWC. Um, so the key um, messages that we receive from the interviews and the study are uh, the need to updating website uh, of the CWC with contact details uh, and activities that they are doing. And also we see um, innovative um, utilization of social media from ACWC Thailand. Uh, and this is something that perhaps can be uh, utilized by other representatives to ensure public engagement and accountability. Uh, we also um, are hoping that uh, CSOs can be included in the selection process 
uh, for uh, all the tents at the ASEAN, um, and there is strong suggestions to conduct more frequent and regularized consultative meetings with CSOs. Uh, despite SWC don't have uh, guidelines like I said to engage with uh, CSOs, uh, but uh, resounding comments from the interviewers say that uh, the SWC has been very open um, to entertain um, request from CSOs to do dialogue, etc. Uh, but perhaps um, a more a frequent and regularized consultation can be done in the future. Um, next slide, please. In terms excuse, of the excuse me, Madam. Yes. Use the, your, your time is limited, so please. Uh, you still have uh, about two minutes yes. left. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will not go uh, very detail on the stakeholder engagement. Uh, can you please put the uh, presentations back? Yeah. Um, so in terms of the stakeholder engagement, um, this is where's the slide? Yes. Um, so the slide, the stakeholder engagement, we are looking at the stakeholder engagement of between uh, SWC and other ASEAN mechanisms, international uh, organizations and CSOs. But given the time, I won't be able to share it. However, uh, there is a need to have a more um, systematic point of engagement with the SO to reduce the dependency on individual representatives. Uh, but also, I want to comment um, um, SWC relationship with other international organizations. Um, the feedback has been very positive, and also in the earlier years of SWC, there has been some effort of engagement with the committee, uh, which was led by Ibu Rita at that time. So uh, that can be and should be sustained in future. Um, and I, I think by the end we'll talk more about uh, engagement between SWC and ICER, um, um because that's also something that we see uh, getting better from year to year. Uh, next is about the case study on COVID-19. Um, so uh, as everyone knows, uh, the feminization of the pandemic has saved women and children because of the domestic uh, work that uh, we need to do. Um, and then in April, ASEAN did special summit. However, there is no specific mention on the protection of women and children. And then compared to other regional body, which did um, a session uh, on March, so we are a bit late. Um, and then even in uh, African Union and Council of Europe, um, the women commissions have uh, clearly stated to include general approach and uh, approach uh, on anti-discrimination to women and children in the uh, regional body post-pandemic recovery plan, uh, something that we have not been done, uh, at least publicly. Um, and those regional women's rights mechanisms also uh, include analysis uh, and recommendations to protect the rights of LGBT women, refugee, indigenous women, migrant, uh, etc., especially on their sexual reproductive health and rights. So we hope uh, we can see that coming from the ACWC. Um, uh, uh, and um, a public response would be really needed. Um, so in terms of next slide, please. Um, we have four main uh, recommendations for SWC. One is um, to, to draft in collaboration with the SO, a revised term of reference, or at least use the existing term of reference in a full, innovative, and creative way to fulfill its protection mandates. Doing amicus play, uh, analyzing national laws, providing legal recommendations. Um, to the government would be something that um, the survey and uh, interviews are uh, highlighted. And also the third uh, recommendation is to maintain transparency and accountability to the public. They are uh, updating information in the website is extremely important um, so that everyone are aware of um, the hard work that HWC is doing. And fourth recommendation is to establish uh, in collaboration with CSOs mm -hmm. a discriminatory framework of mutual, mutual engagement so that women and children uh, themselves can engage meaningfully with HWC. The last slide that I have 
is um, recommendation to ASEAN member states. Uh, definitely the first action point is to allocate more funds, human resources, and technical support to the HWC because um, its body is extremely underfunded. And second is to encourage and support uh, recognition of the HWC term of reference um, to um, recommended more protection from role of the body by receiving complaints, by doing country um, transformation in investigation of cases, etc. And then the third is to support the WC support um, to maintain the action across uh, ASEAN bodies and always uh, ensure the institution is the WC um, within the ASEAN platforms of uh, conversations um, through different pillars. Um, so with that, I would like to say thank you. My next slide. Uh, is also uh, thank you and then the last slide if you want to know more about uh, our work forum asia work um last slide please next uh, please um uh, visit us in facebook twitter linkedin um and website so with that i would like to end my presentations and thank you so much again for the opportunity thank you so much uh, uh madam rachel for the very interesting findings and recommendations, uh, especially uh, for the beneficial of the ACWC in the future. I'm sure uh, all of us uh, have a, a lot of uh, questions and comments uh, for that uh, finding and recommendation, uh, because we're talking about the solidifying the role of think tanks and CSO in the advocacy to strengthen the ACWC. So uh, I would like to welcome uh, Her Excellency, Madam Yuyum, Yuyum Fahni, uh, Bang Yani. Uh, good morning. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. I'm very struggling to yes. find the stream yet, but now I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining with us. Uh, and for all of the participants who would like to uh, make a comment or question, please uh, write it down in the chat uh, room, and we will uh, we will have a panel uh, no open discussion about the Q and A later on after all of the presentation made by the our distinguished panelists. And now I would like to invite uh, our uh, second panelist. I'm sure she will have uh, a lot of uh, comment uh, uh, responding the findings and recommendations, uh, uh, especially for the SCWC uh, for uh, women's rights. And uh, she also have a 15 minutes uh, maximum for uh, speech. And uh, so I, I will uh, invite her, my friend, uh, Madam Danti Anwar. The floor is yours. Madam. Good morning, Ibu Rita. Yes. Can, uh, can you, you hear me, Ibu Rita? Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me uh, to this uh, public lecture on the commemoration of the decade of ACWC as well as the launch of the ACWC report, especially to the ASEAN Studies Center, Physical UGM, uh, Forum Asia, and uh, the Embassy of the Netherlands. <clears throat> Budita, I'm not going to make a comment on the uh, recommendation because I just heard the recommendations and the report just now, but uh, I would like to share with all of you the uh, the presentation on the roles uh, of ACW and its achievements and challenges, especially uh, since I'm the representative for women's rights. So the achievements that I would like to share here are related to the uh, issue of women's rights and uh, gender equality and gender mainstreaming. Uh, the part on the children's rights will be presented by Ibu, Ibu Yuyum, of course as the Indonesia Rep for Children's Rights. Next. 
Ya, uh, Ibu Raja has already stated on the status of ACWC, uh, but I just like to mention a little bit about the status uh, so that uh, we can relate it to the findings by the report of uh, Forum Asia uh, with regard to the some of the findings uh, is very much related, of course, to the status uh, of SCWC itself. So SCWC stands for ASEAN Commission on the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Women and Children, or SCWC. It was founded based on the ASEAN Charter under Article 14, and it was uh, set up in uh, 10 years ago. And the status of ACWC is an intergovernmental, intergovernmental body, meaning that it is part of the government body in ASEAN member state and an integral part of the ASEAN organizational structure. So I would like to highlight that it, it is a consultative body. Next. Ibu Rachel has already mentioned to us on the mandate and functions. Uh, maybe we can skip this. I'm not going to repeat again. To the next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, now I would like to share with you the achievements of the SCWC, especially with regard to the uh, women's rights in 10 years. Uh, the first one is the completed programs. So these completed programs were were uh, uh, conducted in coordination with uh, several sectoral bodies in ASEAN, especially with ACW. So that is also a uh, uh, sectoral body uh, regarded with women issues. It's, uh, it's called ACW, uh, ASEAN Committee on Women. So the members of ASEAN Committee, uh, community, uh, committee on Women are mostly from the government uh, sectors, while the members of the SCWC varied from country to another country. Some countries can be from NGOs or CSOs, another can be from government organization. And the, we are not called ourselves commissioners, but representatives. Uh, that's why we have a lot of uh, shortfalls, why we have this, uh, you know, mandate cannot be really uh, implemented uh, fully. So the first one, we had uh, completed regional guidelines procedures to address the needs of victim of trafficking instance or TIP. These guidelines are uh, currently used by uh, related sectoral bodies in order to address the needs of victims of trafficking in persons. Uh, the second uh, program is ASEAN Gender Sensitive Guidelines for Handling Women Victims of TIP. So this guideline is uh, in particular for addressing the women as victims of uh, TIP in ASEAN. The third one is a development of guidelines on gender non stereotyping in curricula and textbooks. Uh, this was already uh, disseminated as well among member states, uh, but we really, need, we really need to monitor the effectiveness of the guidelines. And the first one is legal identity of all women and children in ASEAN. Next. Another completed uh, program is uh, Number five is coping study on strengthening protection and empowerment of women migrant workers in crisis and disaster situation. Uh, so this is a study uh, conducted by several member states in order to, uh, to see how far the protection and empowerment of women migrant workers are being uh, conducted in crisis and disaster situation. Number six is workshop on gender, peace and security. So we already have a workshop on gender peace and security advancing women's role in peace mediation in southeast asia opportunities and challenges this is also uh, in collaboration with other sectoral bodies uh, number seven is conference on gender mainstreaming in higher education so gender mainstreaming is actually uh, part of the role of acw asean committee on women uh, but you uh, see also uh, in collaboration with SCW, uh, try to uh, instill gender in all the three pillars. 
Eight is concerns on strengthening the protection and power of women migrant workers crisis disaster situation. And then number nine, uh, we just finished this senior official concerns on gender mainstreaming in the three pillars, ASEAN uh, social cultural community. We have the general conference on GMS with AAC uh, pillar as well as with APSC pillar. Next. Uh, 10 to 15, development of ASEAN guideline on general mainstreaming programs and projects. This is a, a guideline being developed by uh, one of member states. The regional workshop to develop draft on gender assessment tool. Number 12, regional workshop to gather data and gender mainstreaming initiative in each AMS, ASEAN member state. And then uh, number 13, we also already developed a booklet uh, and animation TV spots on awareness raising campaign on the social impacts of climate change. And then 14 is regional campaign on the ASEAN he for she. So this is already also uh, disseminated within member states, how to encourage men and boys to get involved in the he for she campaign to eliminate uh, gender-based violence. Number 15 is ASEAN campaign on ending gender-based work uh, workplace exploitation through knowledge and music. This is also already developed uh, by one uh, member states uh, in order to make sure that uh, gender uh, mainstreaming mm -hmm. is also integrated in the workplace situation. Next. So those are some of the complete, uh, complete programs. Now I would like to share with you uh, some of the ongoing mm -hmm. programs related to the women issues. The first one, uh, we just finished the midterm review of the ASEAN Regional Plan of Action on the Elimination of All Forms of Violence Against Women. Actually, it's still ongoing, not finished yet. And the second one, at the moment, we are in, uh, in the process of developing ASEAN strategic framework on gender streaming. This is in collaboration with uh, bodies such as ACW. Uh, the third one, we are in the process of preparing, uh, supported by a consultant, Regional study on women, peace, and security. Before we conduct the regional study on women, peace, and security, we already held a workshop on the implementation of uh, uh, social uh, uh, on the uh, resolution 1325 on women, peace, and security. This regional study on women, peace, and security is still ongoing. Uh, involving in particular uh, three member states which are currently uh, active, Philippines, Indonesia and Malaysia, plus uh, Cambodia and Vietnam. And then at the moment we also in the process of drafting a standard and protocol guidelines for uh, ACWC. Next. So apart from the uh, the programs that we did uh, internally, we also have a cross-sectoral and interpillar inter cooperation. So these are some of the sectoral and interpillar cooperation that ACWC is also involved, in particular for issues of women rights. The first one is implementation of the gender guidelines and procedures to address the needs of victim of uh, TIP, especially on women and children. So we already have in our work plan, we uh, already conducted capacity building trainings and the use of toolkit in six ASEAN languages. Uh, we also have center capacity on prevention and investigation of the IP for forced labor. And we also have developed the public campaign in support of ASEAN on EVAL and the whole tip work plans on um, ending gender-based workplace exploitation like, like I already discussed before. And we had the pilot project on the implementation of the ASEAN ACWC gender sensitivity guidelines for handling women of the IP that, that I just discussed uh, previously. Next. On the second one is uh, for the next work plan, 2021-2025, uh, we are going to finish uh, our 2020 work plan, 2016-2020 work plan. And we plan in the future with regard to the Bohol uh, TIP, uh, we can have the uh, conduct touch on trends on the demand and supply of TIP, conduct regular consultation with relevant sec uh, sector bodies. This is including the CSO. 
uh, on the implementation of active ASEAN Convention on Trafficking in Person. Uh, the third one, we develop tools on the provision of appropriate uh, care protection and support for victims of TIP. And the project mainstreaming women's empowerment in ASEAN, leveraging information and technology in support of development. So this is a plan uh, that will be integrated in the 2021-2025 work plan. Next. Yeah, with regard to the cross-pillar collaboration, we also involve in the social protection. So currently, there is a general work and action plan on implementing declaration on strengthening social protection in ASEAN and the draft ASEAN social protection result framework, highlighting the commitment of uh, ACWC its implementation. So uh, we also involve this uh, project. And then there is also person with disabilities issue. We are also uh, involved in the ASEAN Enabling Master Plan 2025 on the mainstreaming of the rights of person with uh, disabilities. Uh, we, we are mostly invited by the sectoral bodies to uh, discuss on their projects and programs in how to integrate the, the rights of person with disabilities. Next. So we already also asked the ASEC, ASEAN Secretariat, to develop tools to take down its implementation. And we are also uh, trying to propose a regional dialogue on mainstreaming the rights of persons with disabilities with the gender perspective. And then the last one of the cross-cultural uh, uh, pillar uh, cooperation is culture of prevention. So SEWC has also been one of the relevant bodies especially on the issue of how to prevent the, the culture of violence, especially uh, violence against women and children. Next. So those are some of the uh, program implemented, the ongoing as well as the cross-pillar uh, cross, uh, cooperation. Now I would like also to mention here the challenges of SCWC. Uh, so I can relate this to the findings uh, of the Forum Asia on the roles of SCWC for the last 10 years. One is the limitation of the mandates. Uh, you remember that SCWC is, uh, is a consulted, uh, just a consultative, a consultative body and it is an intergovernmental body. Uh, with the mandates uh, mostly is to, uh, you know, uh, to promote the policies, not to directly involve in the protection. And then the second challenge is, uh, can you go back to the challenge, please? The second, yeah, the second one. Can you go back before that? Yeah, the second one that we then I uh, identify is there is a lack of system that facilitates smooth coordination uh, among its bodies uh, to avoid dupli duplication and overlapping of programs or projects. For instance, we have several programs uh, also related with gender issues in other sectoral bodies, but sometimes we don't know the programs because there is no system. Uh, that can really uh, smoothly coordinate. Uh, what we have is just a, its pillar has its own uh, coordination system, but there is no uh, cross-cutting or uh, cross-pillar uh, system uh, of coordination in order to avoid the duplication. I think this is already pointed in the report as well. And then the third one, there is a gap between collaboration of the social cultural with economic community because there is a, no smooth coordination like I mentioned on the second challenge. And with the political community, uh, those pillars work in silo. Uh, moreover, gender issue is not yet understood and becomes the priority of the three pillars. Aside, uh, taken only by ACW, ACWC, uh, SOMSOAT, uh, mostly from the ASCC pillars. That's why at the moment, uh, in collaboration with ACW, we are trying to integrate the gender issues, uh, gender mainstreaming, 
in the three pillars. So the, we already conducted the workshop on gentleman swimming, inviting all the three pillars. And at the moment, we are in the process of develop, uh, developing a gentleman swimming framework. I hope this can be a bridge. Next challenge is number four. Uh, the report also found that ACWC role is not uh, the same similar as the regional mechanism like in Europe or even in UN, uh, which is uh, which is quite accurate because uh, for one thing, ACWC uh, rep members not called commissioners, yeah, like other in, uh, for instance, uh, UN commissioners or rapporteurs, yeah. So they are only called representatives. So this is quite different from other human rights mechanism. Uh, that's why uh, it cannot really respond to urgent calls for assistance and protection and or to issues needed handling with regard to women and children. Uh, this is uh, also related to the first challenge, which is a limited mandate of the SEW. I think this is also pointed uh, mainly uh, uh, finding from the uh, Forum Asia report. As, but uh, we can say that it is a progress, actually, a positive progress, because before in ASEAN, there is no such regional mechanism on human rights. So although it has a limitation of mandates, uh, we need to revise the TOR, I agree, but it's not easy to revise the TOR. I'm telling you the, the, the bureaucracy that we have to go through, for example, when we need to revise just one section, uh, like the uh, like the tenure of the membership. Until now, we don't have any agreement yet. So it is very important uh, for all member states to agree on the revision. So it is a long uh, winding road to revise the TOR, but there is still opportunity. Uh, the fifth one, the appointment of representative varied from one country. In Indonesia, we have the open uh, open uh, public uh, open application for the membership uh, but in other country they have a different mechanism so some can be from go from from cso with different background with different uh, experiences and different understanding on the uh, gender issues women issues and children issues this is also can be a problem uh, with regard to the uh, our commitment as the representative and then the sixth one is funding limitation to execute the work plans. So I think some uh, of the challenges that I pointed out here are already uh, discussed in the report. So I, I cannot agree more with the findings of the Forum Asia report. But I think we also have to uh, be quite balanced in our report. Uh, I mean, the, can, uh, you can see that we also uh, manage Excuse me, Madam Danti, your time is one minute left. I think she probably has a connection problem, Burita. I think she probably has a Sorry. connection problem. Oh, okay. Okay. I hope somebody can help her or fix the problem. All right. Uh, apology, Ibu Danti. Maybe you have a problem with your connection. And she left for a while. So uh, thank you so much, Ibu Danti, for your interesting presentations, particularly particularly talking about our reflection of the, the work of the ACWC on the promotion of the rights of women and children in the past decade. Uh, so it will be interesting uh, later on uh, for the discussion on the uh, role of the ACWC uh, related to the finding report uh, made by the Forum Asia. So uh, I would like to delay our, uh, so I would like to continue, sorry, uh, our uh, 
panel discussion, our public lecture. And uh, so, Gudanti, excuse me. Are you finished with your presentation? Yeah, I'm just back. I'm sorry, I just disconnected. Yeah, I'm back now. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. So uh, I, uh, I hope that you can uh, continue later uh, in your uh, discussion, if you don't mind. Okay. Because, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the interesting uh, presentation reflection about the work of the ACWC on the promotion of the protection of the right of women and women's space particularly. So I would like to invite our uh, next panelist uh, that I already introduced her, her short bio. Uh, she's also my friend uh, uh, and she, uh, she as an uh, Indonesian representative uh, of SCWC for uh, the children right. Uh, I would like to invite her also to to give a comment on the finding of the and recommendation made by the Forum Asia and the assessment and also uh, she can also give a reflection of the work the SCWC uh, from the children rights perspective perspective in the last uh, ten years. So uh, uh, I'm proudly to invite her, Madam. You have the floor, Madam. Uh, you, you, uh, you, ah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Iburita. Yes, I'm, I'm here now. Yes, I'm here now because I have a problem how to log in with the StreamYard. I'm very excited, but now I'm here together with all of you in here. And thank you so much for the uh, Forum Asia and ASEAN Study Center to invite us and also uh, launch the report, the assessment of the SCWC for the 10 decade or 10 years. And from the, uh, from my perspective as a children right in SCWC, I would like to say about the three area implementation of the current SCWC work and the other about the priorities for the next years and the last, uh, uh, respond on the uh, Forum Asia report for the 10 decade, but this is not all, but only few of the respond. Okay, for the first, actually, for the implementation, SCWC uh, cover period 2016 and 2020, and we come conclusion by the end of this year. And we have a 16 wide range thematic area, about the two thirds of the regional project have already been implemented. And we have the four milestone for the SCWC achieve the desire of come of highlight as uh, first, uh, we already conducted the midterm review as the regional plan of action violence against children. Uh, this also already presented in our UN high level political forum on sustainability development development in July 2019. And then this also a part of our commitment, how to see the, the planning and after that we have to monitoring the implementation of the our commitment to eliminate the violence against children. And the second also, we already mentioned by Ibu Danti also about the regional guideline and procedure to address the need of victim trafficking in person. Uh, actually, this is also continue with the capacity building. We invite the, including the HSO to be part of this uh, training, uh, how they can address the need of victim of trafficking in person. And the third, Ibu Dante already mentioned about the report on the women's advancement and gender equality in July 2018 at the Gender Mainstreaming Conference for the ASCC sectoral body. And the number third, number three is a uh, SCWC work to protecting children's rights to continue to strive our best to work within present circumstance on following initiative and project. Continue, please. Uh, other the 35 ASEAN summit in November 2019, our leader adopted about the declaration on the protection of the from a uh, form of online exploitation and abuse in ASEAN. I think uh, this is also the good commitment 
continuing with the regional plan of action for the protection of the children from all uh, from all online exploitation and abuse collaboration with the somswat this is also good uh, for me is a good commitment how the SAWC work on the promotion and protection of the right uh, women and children and then we have also the declaration on the we said the ccm children in the context of migration this is also uh, we join the sectoral body to collaboration with the other relevant sectoral bodies not only for the scwc stand alone project but we uh, invite many of the people to think about uh, the declaration itself that's uh, what we have achieved uh, during the the uh, uh, 10 years of the SEWC. And then the priorities for the next five years, I think uh, we want to look back into what they had though so far provide the new insight of the guide SEWC work, particularly, particularly on the promotion and protection children rights moving forward. And then we more focus on the quality of the project rather than the volume. But now we can see how the, what we call the uh, objective is not standalone. How also SCWC can support further a blueprint of the ASCG itself. We, not, we can see the, the interaction among the blueprint, the big blueprint, and how the SCWC can contribute to the blueprint itself. Thus, we want to see the, the quality of the project rather than the number of the activities. That's why we also using the key result area to achieve the, our uh, activities to the uh, obje objective in SCWC and contribute it to the ASCG. And also we synergize to our work effort. It's mean SCWC strengthen the collaboration. That's why in every single activities, we always invite by the other sectoral bodies. For example, some SWAT, uh, SCW, we have a annual meeting, I think, face to face with the SCW. Uh, uh, ASEAN uh, ICHAR, ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, and also Sorry, <laughs> connection problem. And then uh, we, we said the intra uh, ASEAN uh, pillar. We, we try to uh, strengthen the collaboration with the other pillar and also uh, the other public sector, uh, private and people sector, including GSO, academic think tank, to, to support the collaboration working with the SEWC. Uh, okay, next. Okay, uh, SCWC also contemporary trend in the region in this fast changing time. More specifically, I discussed on the SCWC visioning and planning for research workshop in 2019. We would like to explore more use of the life cycle lens in our work plan to look at the need of our women and children holistically. That's why now we move forward how to working together and more uh not only single uh purposes but how we can see the contributed for the all of the children and women entire asean that's that's the what we we will do in future and then the scwc have charted some of the strategy initiative in the next work plan we hope a lot of flexibility with the regard resources mobilization to better respond to the critical need of the hours. We have witnesses how country and international organization have to be agile in order to deal with the un unprecedented public health crisis in this year. As emphasized by the SCWC chair, we too, when developing our next five-year work plan, will need to leave room to complement the initiative of ASEAN in responding to end of recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Because 
this is also our challenging during the pandemic time how can work uh, in the ASEAN level everything should be under the webinar like us in here and uh, we hope also uh, next work plan we still work in the progress uh, we will gather the NHAN in upcoming 21st SEWC online meeting and SEWC 10 year retreat in November 2020 I hope I hope we can meet each other in November, but just hope. <laughs> in collaboration with the relevant stakeholder to taking into account priorities and support from the our partner. That's the what the ICWC uh, doing during the implementation for the work plan and also the next uh, priority. I think the next priority is already mentioned about we should be holistic approach, not only single activities, but how we can see the beyond in the future more wider impact for the women and children and for the response for the report forum asia i think uh, this is good also for 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 inform to the scwc what have been done under the 10 years i think ibu danti already mentioned many of challenging in there and also we hope uh like uh SC, i'm happy also i read this report about the movement of the SEWC, more respondent uh, knowing or uh, know and they they know what the SEWC doing and they're familiar with the SEWC. That's also part of our strategy as SEWC, how SEWC can introduce themselves to the public, to the more wider uh, stakeholder to see what the SEWC have done and what the SAWC responsibility as a representative, not commissioner like Kei Budanti said. We are representative, but we try to do the best how to promote and protect the children and women right in future. And uh, I think uh, that's why you said uh, maybe not all SAWC uh, recognized or knowing by their many of the CSO, but uh, this is depend on our effort, but we try to the best in future how we can collaborate more with the many stakeholder. And also, Ibu Danti already mentioned about the non-interference consultation and consensus. This is the principle for sovereignty, sovereignty of the Asian member state. This should be respect. That's why sometimes if we say yes, maybe nine or eight Asian member state, but two reviews. We, we can't do the 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 continuing with the, the others implementation and then uh you said uh for the report i think it's better also you make a separate between the children and women findings that's easy for us also to follow up in the future rather than you make sometimes you make each other sometimes you make a separate that's that's better or oh, this is for the children right this is for the uh, women right and business for the together for the SAWC. That's from my perspective. And then uh, for the child merit you mentioned, I think we have a conduct the activities for the child merit, but on not only the Malaysia, but also Indonesia have a project on that, but I didn't mean you didn't mention in the report. Actually, this is also the our uh, focus in future about the uh, child remarried uh, child early first married issues in future not only the early married but child early of uh first married uh children that's that's the our uh title and then uh the other uh approval in scwc i think the same with the other bodies this issue should be a communal issues impact on women and children in asean not only happen in their own countries that's why if we have the uh project one project maybe happen in one country but it's not so much bad issue in the other maybe uh we cannot consensus on that but depend on our discussion during the scwc meeting and then for the uh lacking of the vulnerable group i think uh for example for the disability where the uh, 
uh, prove the our commitment. Uh, Dante already mentioned about the we involve uh, in the enabling master plan for the people with disability, but it's not specific yet in the implementation in ACWC work plan. But next, we hope we can have uh, uh, activities for the disability children. And also for the other uh, vulnerable children, I think if we mention all of children, this already part of the vulnerable group in there. Not we have a mention like uh, uh, you mentioned about the uh, victim of their abuse, children uh, LGBTs, uh, disability. But if we talk about the all children, they already include. How how we can uh, say it's a not specific. A title for the vulnerable group. Uh, that's that's we want to uh, make sure about the all the children not left behind. Uh, I think that the okay SCWC website. I think next we will improve because we're still discussing about the uh, funding about the annual basis funding. How to support the SCWC website. I'm agree with you, it's not updated, but I hope the next work plan we can focus also in the SCWC website. And then we hope also during the last discussion, the last meeting SCWC, we hope we can get the more funding for the SCWC. Uh, uh, for instance, maybe we can, maybe we're still discussing to get the annual budget from the ASEAN member state in future. Like IHR, they have also the annual budget from the countries that we want to see opportunity in the future here and then oh my goodness hmm. blackout okay and then matikan ah, Do uh, you actually share that he will have electricity blackout? So perhaps it's happening right now. Yes, perhaps it's happening right now. And Ibuta, you're still muted. So, apology, audience. Uh, maybe Ibu, do you have a problem with her? internet so uh i hope in several seconds we will have uh, her again or somebody can help her this is the the real problem when we have live uh, presentation so uh Can, can I hear anything to solve the problem from the organizer or? All right. Yes, maybe because of the unstable internet, uh, I will inform Madam Yu Yun to finalize her presentation uh, later. Uh, an apology for uh, all of you uh as promises i would like to give the the uh, the time for uh okay ibu ibu Yuyum will uh, inform uh, after she uh, solved the problem with the electricity now i would like to uh invite ibu uh, sorry madam dante because she also have the same problem previously I would like to invite her to finalize her presentation, maybe uh, in the short time, uh, so for two uh, or three minutes, uh, so she will uh, can uh, 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 make a presentation uh, now. Uh, Madam, you have the floor. Excuse me, Madam Dante, please unmute your... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Please. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thank can you. Uh, thank organizer? Yes. Can the organizer? Yes. Uh, can you go back to the challenges uh, number four? Yes. 
go back to the last one, last slide. Challenges. Yes. Uh, yes. My present, my presentation was up to the challenges when when the, I was cut off. Now I would like to continue the the the, the next challenge in the implementation uh, in the role of SCWC is uh, the Forum Asia has already found that the SCWC role is uh, limited uh, its function due to the TOR. Uh, I also like to mention the same thing that ACWC is supposed to be the regional mechanism for women and children human rights. However, it's not in ACWC TOR to respond to respond to urgent calls for assistance and protections, and or to issues needed handling with regard to women and children. Uh, such as, for instance, we have uh, examples in other regional mechanism in other countries or in UN mechanism. Uh, they call themselves commissioners or rapporteurs, uh, they, and they and they can uh, directly uh, give assistance uh, on the protection on uh, to women and children right away. But in uh, our mandate uh, and our function, uh, it is quite limited. So that is a one challenge, uh, which is already directly uh, mentioned by the uh, report of the Forum Asia. And then the fifth challenge is the appointment of represent representatives quite varied from one country to other countries. Some countries, they send the uh, government officials as the representatives. Other countries, uh, NGOs and others, academias. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, in the past, we have uh, CSOs as our representatives. But at the moment, uh, we have GO and CSO. But the... Uh, but the members were appointed, uh, you know, through the open uh, campaign. Yeah? So it's not directly appointed. Uh, other countries may be directly appointed, they are representative, but in Indonesia, we go through the uh, open, open uh, bidding. Of course, this would affect the commitment and understanding on gender and children issues. Uh, I've been the representative for ACWC for almost three years now. I can understand in each meeting, uh, people have a different understanding on CSR or on CEDAW on other in all other inter international instruments because of their different backgrounds and different experiences and also uh, different commitments. And the last challenge is funding limitation. We, we, you already mentioned this. Uh, unlike ICHA, we only have a one-time uh, pledge for the funding of the ACWC, uh, and we are thinking of having a, you know, uh, annual funding as well. Although it's not easy to get the funding from the plan, as in the case of Indonesia, uh, Indonesia uh, contribution is the last one contributed to the uh, the ACWC fund. So I don't know. I'm not sure whether we can get the annual funding for this case. But uh, ACWC itself, during my chairmanship, we already have the, uh, uh, during our annual session, annual meeting, we have a side event on partnership commitment. We invite uh, different uh, stakeholders and different uh, international organization, different funding organization, and we share our work plan for them in order to be able to support us. So this is one solution as well. But another uh, challenge is other sectoral bodies also, you know, uh, asking for the the same fund as well for the same programs. So it's also a challenge in with regard to the funding in ASEAN. So I think that's all what I can share on uh, my presentation. Uh, I'd like to appreciate the findings, the report findings by Forum Asia. I, I agree, uh, maybe the report can be more balanced. You can also, you know, not only the negative sides of the uh, findings, but also be more supportive. <laughs> you know, the mandate is, is limited, but, you know, we have done I think our best as well to do what we can do in ACWC. I think that's all, Burita, that I can share uh, for the Thank rest you. of my presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ibu Danti, uh, for your uh, interesting presentation and note, and also uh, 
comment on the uh, findings. So we can continue later on the discussion. Uh, now I would like to invite our fourth speaker. As promises, I have to introduce her, the Excellency, uh, Madam Yuyun Wahyun Ningrum. Yes. Um, Madam Wahyun Ningrum is the representative of Indonesia to the ASEAN Com Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights or ICER for the period of 2019 to 2021. She obtained her MA on Human Rights from Mahidol University, Thailand, and now pursuing PhD at the International Institute of Social Studies of the Erasmus University, Rotterdam. And her research uh, deal with the uh, various state engage engagement with human rights in the context of ASEAN regionalism from the third world approaches to international law. And she was the team leader of the regional EU and ASEAN dialogue instrument on human rights facility uh, in 2015 to uh, 2017 to support the human rights works of the ICER, uh, the ASEAN Commission on the Promotion of the Right of Women and Children also, as well, and the ASEAN Committee on Migrant Workers, and also the ASEAN Committee on Women or ACWs, and she spent about 20 years working in human rights organization at the national, regional, and international level. And some of us may be uh, knowing her because her influence piece on writing in the media uh, 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 in Indonesia and in region. So, uh, so that's her. Uh, bio short bio now i would like to uh, uh give the floor to madam uh I, maybe i call her wahyuning room instead of Yun because make uh, the uh, audience will be difficulty so uh madam uh wahyuning room i would like to invite you to uh to give of course of course to give a comment on the report uh, particularly on synergizing efforts between ICER, ACWC, CSO for further the, the, uh, the agenda on gender mainstreaming in ASEAN and a mainstreaming human rights protection in ASEAN uh, level. Uh, Madam Mayuning Room, the floor is yours for 15 minutes. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, congratulations for Forum Asia for um, releasing this uh, report, uh, it's very very useful and very timely uh, to to uh, to publish this report now. And also, I would like to congratulate ACWC. Um, it has been a remarkable journey of ten years of promoting and protecting uh, the rights of women and children. Uh, I was there uh, participating in the process of developing the TOR. Uh, in that time, civil society in the region knew what they want for ICER, but not necessarily knew what they want for ACWC, because no similar institution in the world. Uh, so I can say that ACWC is the first uh, a body that focus on uh, uh, human rights of women and children. In the Inter-American Commission, uh, it has a unit, a committee, not commission. Uh, it is rather uh, like uh, like the European Commission, it's like intergovernmental, not uh, independent uh, commission like the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. So we did not have, in that time, we did not have similar uh, body that we can use as a reference uh, for ACWC. Uh, and I also remember I was in Hanoi when uh, 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 the, uh, the ACWC was launched. So the TOR of ACWC was adopted in November um, 2009, but the the body itself was launched in April uh, 10 in 2010 uh, when Vietnam was the chair. And as you can see in the uh, uh, in the press release of the deputy prime minister of Vietnam in that time, ACWC was introduced as a welfare organization in ASEAN uh, for women and children. 
despite the fact the name is using uh, human rights of women and children, uh, rights of women and children, but it was introduced as a welfare uh, organization uh, for women and children. So that is why I mentioned earlier that the journey has been remarkable because uh, it was introduced as a welfare organization, but how it has evolved uh, so far in the last 10 years it become more and more uh, right focus uh, for women and children. So again, I would like to to, uh, to congratulate um, uh, SCWC for having this kind of uh, difficult journey. Uh, I'm sure uh, because you have 20 rather than 10, uh, unlike in ITER, uh, we have 10, it's also already difficult. Uh, and also because there is a characteristic of uh, politics in, in ITER, uh, uh, but uh, I'm sure uh, pushing the envelope in ACWC is equally difficult. So uh, I prepared the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, can we go to the next? I have a different uh, instruction. Uh, one is on the relationship between ITER and SCWC uh, and the role of Think Tank. And the other one, uh, I was uh, asked to talk about uh, um, uh, the role of uh, ITER to mainstream uh, uh, human rights protection as human rights protection in ASEAN and also uh, gender mainstreaming. So I try to put them together into uh, uh, in this in this outline of presentation. Uh, but first, uh, I was asked to respond on the report. Uh, for the report, I. Uh, I welcome this report. I think this is very important to document uh, the journey, and it is very useful uh, for the next generation to to know what what is actually happening in this uh, in this current time for further uh, advocacy plan. Uh, I've read the report, and I would like to uh, give some of the uh, suggestion for for future reports. First, I would like to agree with what Ibu Yuyum suggested. Perhaps uh, it might be better to separate between women and children. The first uh, criticism to this to, to ACWC was that why women and children come together and why not we have women commission and children commission. Uh, but there was a practical uh, background why women and children become one commission. Uh, uh, as you can see uh, from the presentation of Ibu Danti and Ibu Yuyum, uh, each uh, commission has its own life. So perhaps it would be better to separate both because it uh, goes to a different uh, direction. And also because I, I actually welcome this kind of separation because uh, the, the characteristic of uh, women's rights is more on non-discrimination and equality while for, for children because of the age uh, they uh, uh, the the direction of rights the basis of the rights is more protection of children as a child as children so of course the responses will be different when we deal with uh, adults uh, deal with women and women which more uh, ask for uh, non-discrimination and equality Secondly, um, as a as a IT representative, it, it when I read the report, uh, I I found uh, um, unease to 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 see that how ACWC uh, is understood is in comparison with IT. It seems like ACWC is not a body as itself. I think it would be better not to compare because I think that's how it. it somehow i felt that this is a reflection of how society treat women women always be always be seen as in comparison with men so i think we should stop this kind of uh, uh, analysis this kind of view on looking at women similarly how we can treat uh, scwc as scwc not in comparison with icher uh, because in in the report in the forum asia report on on on, on icher rarely make comparison to ACWC. So again, uh, I think uh, comparison is important, but not every time that uh, uh, SCWC uh, come up uh, is analyzed, no need to put uh, uh, IHR in it. In the end, you can you can have a section on comparison, but not the whole body. I mean, I mean that's unfair. Um, 
and also I, I miss the, the view of uh, analyzing on how we can understand the vision of SAWC as reflected in the five-year work plan. The first five-year work plan, the second five-year work plan, the, uh, the third five-year work, work plan now. What kind of message that SAWC tried to uh, send to us in terms of how they want to develop, they want to evolve? in five in 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 uh, five uh, uh, period of time so i think this is important to be conveyed uh, to the readers uh why why SAWC is important and what kind of vision that uh, evolved uh, from uh, uh, 10 uh, for the last 10 years um and also another thing that i miss is um how the selection of activities in five year work plan contribute to the implementation of the TOR. So the link between TOR and of, of uh, the implementation of fiber work plan, uh, I, I do not find it. Maybe I miss it, but I, I just do not get the, the, the gist of, of the analysis of the report. Uh, um, another one is the last uh, 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 observation of, of the report is that I just puzzled uh, uh, looking at the survey, uh, when uh, respondents were asked about whether they are satisfactory on the uh, role of uh, the performance of I, uh, ICWC to promote and then to protect human uh, the right of women and children, they are they say they are satisfaction they they satisfied. But then uh, on the question on public information, uh, uh, the result was very less. So I found there is inconsistent of the responses. Perhaps uh, the um, f this is a suggestion for the next survey. Perhaps uh, the question, the, the big question, like uh, how uh, whether you satisfied with the performance of ACWC and protection, you have to uh, um, elaborate further because the word protection, the word uh, promotion is is a big word. So perhaps need to be uh, um, uh, elaborated more. So it would be easier for respondents to respond uh, to the question. And also already admitted that uh, one source of the information like website is not updated. Uh, I checked last night, it, it is uh, still uh, the information uh, from 2018, or, uh, uh, I think. So I think there's an inconsistent of of the result of the survey, perhaps this is something that needs to be addressed. Okay, so that's my response, but overall, I welcome this report. It has been written well, uh, full of analysis, uh, uh, and I I think the, the aspiration from, from the previous representative, the civil society, already uh, reflected there. I'm, I'm actually very uh, enjoying myself reading uh, the report fully. Um, so that's uh, 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 it is very a uh, good uh, uh, project for uh, Forum Asia, and I hope this can continue uh, in the coming uh, coming years. So my next slide. So I will go to um, uh, first put the uh, uh, because I'm I'm also a scholar, so I I I try to when I whenever I I analyze or talk on something I I. I always base on something that uh, um, uh, some theoretical or concept notes, the con con concepts. So I suggest that we need to see uh, both ICER and SCWC in the frame of uh, regionalism. So um, I can't, it's so, so small, so I cannot read. Um, so regionalism uh, there are a number of uh, definition about regionalism but for for this uh, opportunity i would like to use the regionalism as state project process space cooperation interaction and and standard so the 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 creation of regionalism uh, offer us the opportunity to come up with a regional process in which asean member state can talk to each other can interact to come up with something uh, on uh, on issues that beyond economic and politics because in regionalization project uh, usually they come together because of political issue security issue as the uh, old traditional uh, old uh, regionalism type but in the new regionalism type uh, uh, state talk about beyond security beyond uh, politics 
and now beyond uh, economic by including human rights in it in 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 the uh, uh, ASEAN uh, uh, context uh, include also uh, some of the social uh, cultural issues including the right of women and children so with uh, it is a regional platform it is regional uh, and then come up with regional standards that is why when you find ACWC come up with the uh, ASEAN declaration on the right of children in the context of migration that is something as an output of the regionalism uh, of uh, that has been used by by this body particularly to come up with standards to be able to come up with a standard uh, member state need to come together need to have a space the space itself is the uh, uh, ACWC and also uh, the interaction the negotiation the compromises uh, and so on and so on so uh, in I in, in ASEAN uh, regionalism type is intergovernmental which put state as the uh, main uh, actor but more and more uh, ASEAN uh, uh, reach out to uh, people uh, to civil society to private sector to a number of uh, institution beyond the state so so perhaps uh, at, at the moment we can categorize the regionalism in ASEAN is more um, uh, intergovernmental plus uh, not yet, I think, not yet as what the Amitav Acharya mentioned about uh, popular uh, regionalism yet. So IHRA and ACWC is a project of, uh, of member states. So member states uh, are the one who design uh, what kind of power we have, what kind of, what can, what we can and cannot. But it doesn't mean that the representative of the IHRA and ACWC cannot do anything. Always, as, as we have been seen in the last 10 years, the push from insider uh, 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 creates a lot of uh, changes in uh, the bodies in, in ICWC and IHR. Uh, next slide, please. So I just would like to give that as a basis of our discussion. So the important question based on this concept of regionalism is that after 10 years, uh, for ICHR is 11 years, how the body has maximized the, the opportunity given and provided by this regionalism project whether uh, acwc used this 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 space this this interaction this uh, um, uh, a process to push for the right of women and children quantitatively and qualitatively uh, and then what happened before acwc was established and after acwc is established so i think that that analysis will help us to understand to up and and then also to appreciate um uh, uh, uh the, the process of regionalism in asean and i i i like to put this uh, uh establishment of an institution or the process uh, or, or the um the in engagement as a process that is why uh, five-year work plan uh, becoming very important to see how the evolution of uh, of the body from from zero from nothing to something and where they want to go in the next of uh, uh, 10 or 20 years uh, in the future and how was the body improve the state compliance to respect protect the right of women and children in the region how the existence of the body push the envelope. Uh, I think uh, uh, SCWC, especially on, on children, come up with a number of good initiatives in terms of declaration, standard setting. The implementation is different different uh, issues, but um, this perhaps something that we need to uh, also highlight in the process of developing of, of this body in the region. And how the existence of the body help us to expand our understanding about the right of women and children in the region, uh, rights continue to evolve, uh, and then and then how this body uh, contribute to our ideas about the right of women and children in this region. I think that's a very important questions uh, to be asked after having all the data uh, presented by uh, Forum Asia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so now I, I move to another question given to me on the mainstreaming of gender and human rights uh, uh, in, in ASEAN. Um, uh, the way I term mainstream uh, gender 
is through our programs uh, and then um, and our approach and mainstreaming human rights uh, in ASEAN community is our our uh, human rights strategy one of our human rights strategy by looking at um, the design the implementation monitoring evaluation in all policies uh, 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 and then a programs and approach in ASEAN community next slide please for the uh, gender mainstreaming in ASEAN, uh, this is the stage in ICER to develop our program. As you can see in the process, uh, uh, the third process in drafting concept note and budget, we we are we have to answer the uh, question in the template of our concept note that whether or not this project is has a regional uh, element, has gender mainstreaming and how how we can make sure that this uh, 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 serve the interest of gender mainstreaming in the region, uh, whether it is cross-cutting to look at different uh, kind of vulnerabilities in the region uh, and whether or not uh, it is uh, relevant. So in this process, we have a number of questions we need to answer as the uh, preparation of the project. And also uh, how this uh, project will involve uh, different sectors in the in ASEAN community. So more and more in ASEAN now, uh, sectoral bodies, organs, entities are trying to bring uh, sectoral bodies together in a number of activities. So I saw a number of similar activities that Ibu Danti presented, especially on trafficking in person, similar. So this is another, it is, the, oh, Ibu Yun also mentioned about uh, uh, organizing events together with other sectoral bodies. So, so I think uh, now the, uh, the trend of working in ASEAN uh, uh, bodies it, uh, is working together with uh, sectoral bodies to minimize the silo mentality of the uh, uh, approaches. Uh, next. Uh, in terms of gender mainstreaming, uh, we have ICER has uh, organized number of activities uh, in the past. Uh, well, actually, not the past. Current act, current act initiative uh, is about uh, related to counter violent extremism, in which we put uh, gender sensitive approaches to gender uh, to counter violent extremism, trafficking in person, right to health, business and human rights. So basically, as I mentioned earlier in the previous slide, all activities have to uh, satisfy uh, the, in, the, the, the interest of making gender mainstream in our programs. Uh, in five-year work plan, we continue to do that, but we have number of specific uh, work in relation to gender mainstreaming, uh, following and supporting the agenda of SCW, as Ibu Danti mentioned earlier. There is a specific program uh, in FIFA work plan of, of ICHER. Next slide, please. Uh, this, these are past initiative on gender equality and gender mainstreaming in ICHER. I do not want to mention it, but I have to just present it as a documentation. Uh, we organize number of activities uh, as uh, that gender is embedded in our uh, program or uh, there's a specific uh, program in relation to gender mainstreaming. Uh, next, please. Now I move to the role of ICER in mainstreaming human rights in, in, in ASEAN. Uh, our enabling mandate, so the TUR does not mention anything about mainstreaming human rights, but we receive a mandate through the uh, a joint communique of the ASEAN ministers meeting. As you can see in the uh, mandate 4.14 of the TOR that ICER should perform any other task uh, that may be uh, uh, assigned to the uh, ASEAN foreign ministers meeting. So this is another way of expanding your mandates. So despite the fact you only have 14, but this key 4.14 is the key to explore and expand things that is not included in the version of 29 uh, TUR. So that is why um, uh, Indonesia, for instance, 
try to expand the work of ICER through this entry point. Because when our boss is the foreign ministers, when our boss said A, B, C, D, we have to follow. Regardless, it is not mentioned in the TOR. Huh? So this is another way of looking at uh, how to enrich the role of ICER beyond the TOR. Uh, so the mainstreaming of human rights in three communities actually uh, 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 assigned by, uh, oh, I have one more minute, uh, assigned by foreign ministers. And then we use the regional space, uh, intergovernmental inter engagement, providing platform uh, for learning and sharing of uh, practitioners and sectoral bodies to discuss about uh, human rights in their own activities and their own project. And then we use uh, regional process, interaction and cooperation through dialogue, uh, cross-sectoral, cross-pillar, assessing the implementation of ASEAN Human Rights Declaration, uh, active participation to provide inputs to the sectoral bodies like the SOMTC on counter violent extremism. And currently we submitted inputs to the uh, narrative of ASEAN uh, in, in identity uh, that as uh, ASEAN to to improve or to include the promotion and protection of human rights as the identity of ASEAN, and also to the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery uh, uh, Framework, we in, uh, we uh, endorse or we we encourage ASEAN to uh, bring human rights in to safeguard uh, dignity, rights, and equality, and also to provide recommendation and framework. Uh, uh, based on ASEAN Mars Declaration and the international human rights law to the uh, activities of the ASEAN Community Project and providing standards. At the moment, I think the process in ICER is not that smooth as in uh, SAWC in terms of providing declaration, but we can come up with uh, some kind of framework or recommendation at the moment. Uh, next. So I'm using Excuse me, Madam. Yeah, yeah. This Excuse is me, Madam Yuyun. One minute. This is my last. Uh, my, your last, uh, please. So I'm. Um, uh, so in the previous slide, I used this uh, 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 approach of regionalism as that project on how mainstreaming human rights. Uh, in terms of mainstreaming human rights in ICER programs, uh, these are current initiatives that we have now. And we have also some of the activities uh, uh, continuing the uh, mainstream of human rights as human rights strategy uh, in our five-year work plan. I think that's uh, uh, my last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Ayuningum, for your very interesting and uh, presentation and also comment about the role of the both commission the ACWC and ICER, I think you can uh, highlight it later uh, on the discussions. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, apologies that, uh, that I have to give the floor uh, again to Madam Yuyum, who uh, have a technical problem previously. And I, I promised her to give about uh, maximum three, minute, three minutes to finalize her presentations uh, before our uh, next uh, or our last uh, panelists. So, uh, Madam Yuyu, uh, Excellency, I give you a floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Rita. Uh, sorry for this uh, problem because I already mentioned about the blackout in the our unit until 10 to 12 p.m. But I try to do the best for that. Uh, for my closing, I think thank you so much for the ASEAN Forum to give us the assessment report uh, about the SCWC during, during the 10 years decade. And then uh, I think the very important also, I hope we can build these issues also, build the information from the ASEAN Forum to the SCWC uh, meeting in the next uh, November, I think 21st meeting in the next November. And also, if uh, ASEAN Forum want to present, I think you can send the letter to the ASEAN to present about the finding. And uh, maybe we have a question and answer for that and how to 
uh, next forward for the uh, the report uh, in future for the SCWC uh, work plan. Uh, I think uh, that's my uh, comments uh, uh, from this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hope uh, this also will follow back for the other stakeholder body, not only for the SCWC, but for so also for the ASEC and for the UN body and for the donor. Because we want to uh, highlight uh, SCWC is uh, until now we don't have annual budget from the governments, but we still uh, develop the proposal like the CSO, how we can uh, conduct the activity of the workshop in future. But but we can see what the best uh, uh, the best from the SCWC to uh, in future to protect and uh, promote the right of the women and children. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Yuyum, uh, for your final presentation. And uh, now uh, I would like to give uh, and I would like to invite the, our uh, five fifth panelists uh, uh, from the ASEAN Study Center of the Gajah Mada University, um, uh, Madam Agustina Kustulasari. And I would like to invite her to give a comment in, on findings uh, about the role of academician and uh, think tank on strengthening the promotion and the protection of the right of women through the ACWC. So I believe this is a very, uh, uh, very, uh, very much uh, interesting uh, for uh, uh, talking about the role of think tank and CSO uh, in the advocacy of the strengthening the uh, promotion and, the, uh, and protection of the right of women and children. So I would like to invite her, uh, Madam Agustina. Yes, the floor, is yours. the floor is yours. Thank you, Iburita, uh, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. This is such an honor for me to be here today. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate Forum Asia for the launching of the report and also for ACWC, congratulations for the 10th year anniversary. Uh, I suppose we're all very appreciative to all the work that ACWC has uh, conducted. Also the A, um, ACHR uh, represented by, uh, uh, by Yu Yun uh, previously. Uh, allow me to offer um, my understanding on what, uh, uh, what has been, uh, what ACWC has been working on and also the, and in looking at the uh, report uh, from uh, Forum Asia. Uh, definitely not to simplify the matter, but I'd like to uh, bring us a little uh, back to the, the core business to, to refresh and to remind us of what we're dealing with, especially in the context of ASEAN as a, as a regional organization. Uh, also because uh, I think some of the um, uh, audience would appreciate us to go back a little bit about what we are dealing with the CEDAW and CRE, CRC and also uh, ASEAN, um, the, how the ASEAN works, uh, because uh, I think some of the uh, audience is actually uh, students uh, um, who's studying ASEAN in public sector perhaps and other uh, human rights um, uh, topics. All right, uh, let's start with the first um, slide. Uh, my talk will be uh, will cover three um, topics. The first and the second will, I will go uh, quite briefly, and I'll focus on uh, the third later on. The first I, I'd like to uh, uh, review a little bit the CDO and CRC, especially for those who might need some refreshment. And also, second, I'll talk a little about the ASEAN principles and you know how we conduct things in ASEAN. Uh, and so, we, so to help us understand uh, the challenges that uh, uh, our uh, colleagues from uh, ACWC uh, have presented before about the uh, change in TOR, how is it, how it is difficult, and also the uh, funding and so on. And uh, the last one I'll be talking about ideas for future improvements because as much as we are appreciative to what the ACWC have has been uh, working, has been conducting, I think there's always room for improvements here. All right, let's move on to the second slide. Thank you. The CEDAW uh, stands for 
uh, for those who might have not been uh, familiar with this, is Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So this is quite long, but uh, we uh, people working on this area just call it CEDAW. Uh, it's adopted, adopted by the United States nations in 1979 but came into effect in 1981 so next year is going to be the 40th anniversary of this uh, 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 con convention and it, it is one of the most ratified conventions of the UN uh, about about 180 countries have been ratifying this convention meaning to say that this is uh, a lot of uh, countries almost all countries in the world have been working on this as well so we are not alone in this and I think uh, what we're facing, uh, the challenges that we're facing, we can, um, a lot of countries can relate to what we are facing right now. Now, the, the second is on CRC, is the Convention on the Rights of the Child. On the left side of the, the column, you will see some, uh, I, I, jot, I jot down some, uh, the three main, uh, say, principles or uh, main core uh, business of the uh, CEDAW. Uh, first is substantive equality, non-discrimination, and state obligation. Uh, meaning to say, if all uh, every country that has ratified this, they need to address these three. Uh, first, substantive equality means recognizes differences, but affirms equality and corrective measures to enable the environment. So we're talking about equality uh, uh, substantively, and not just uh, formal uh, equality. Uh, also, uh, in, in this part is also to create an, an enabling uh, environment for the uh, for, uh, provision of this equality. And then the second is non-discrimination. Uh, it covers both direct and indirect discrimination in terms of laws and also in terms of uh, practice. Uh, sometimes the indirect discrimination is not quite obvious, uh, but it is uh, it is a discrimination because there's another layer of discrimination as a, a prerequisite of this uh, action, for example. And then the state obligation is uh, when the state party or uh, everyone who ratifies uh, this convention is accountable for any discrimination against women. So uh, countries who has ratified who have ratified this convention is held accountable for any discrimination against women. And so the, the, the obligation of the state is to respect, protect, promote, and fulfill the rights of the women and uh, through the branches of power, judiciary, uh, legislative, and the executive. And then on the right side, I'm sorry if it is too small, I can, I, I'm happy to share this uh, 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 presentation later on to everyone. Um, the uh, right in the in the in the core. I mean, uh, the, the the rights of the children, as we know, is of course definitely more than this. It's over forty rights, but uh, the main rights um, or the main types of rights, I uh, somehow uh, summarize it here. Uh, in the, the the very core is right to life, which is to live a full and happy life, and in 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 doing so. We try to uh, protect and promote the right to survival, happy and healthy life, you know, clean environments, also the right to protection, to be safe from all types of harm, all types of harm, including bullying, a right to participation, to be involved in activities, to share opinion, and to also they have the, the right to name and nationality, uh, which I believe uh, ACWC from uh, uh, Ibu Yuyum before the presentation have covered this as well. The uh, right to development in terms of uh, education and also even to play as part of the development. So this is just a little bit of uh, uh, what we understand about CEDAW and CRC. So for those who have not really you know, got it yet, um, uh, the ACWC is the uh, uh, organization that is the commission that is mandated by the ASEAN to uh, promote this tool. So this is such a, a, a challenging task. Uh, we need to understand that. And uh, next, let's move on to, so so uh, how is it, uh, how, what's, what's going on in ASEAN? And you know, how how sometimes we, we see that the move or the change in ASEAN is uh, somewhat slow, if I can say. So how is it that the, the ASEAN with, the, with all the bodies and with all the, the policies that have been enacted have not somehow quite uh, been quite um, effective or say quick in making change? Uh, let's get back to the ASEAN principles and, and the way we conduct business in ASEAN. So uh, uh, for those who study ASEAN in the public sector, understand this that um, uh, we have the principle of no intervention. 
which is the the ASEAN respects the sovereignty of the all each of the uh, member states, and it means that there is no infer interference on the state's affair. And the decision by consensus, uh, it has been mentioned by all, all the speakers before that any decision or policy needs to be agreed upon by all ASEAN member uh, 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 states um, by the representatives, of course. And um, people oriented uh, ASEAN is looking toward uh, a caring and people oriented ASEAN community. We have a soft diplomacy, uh, not hard diplomacy, uh, and uh, peer pressure is one way to approach uh, the, the soft uh, diplomacy. As we can see here, we see probably the first and the second might be like two things that uh, kind of like uh, prohibit um, any bodies in ASEAN to move uh, quickly because there is that, because uh, it seems that, okay, um, if we, when, for those, for students who learn public policy, we understand that there are types of policies, mandates, inducement, um, capacity building, system change, and uh, hortatory policy or symbolic policy. Now, among these five policies, maybe mandate is, uh, may, uh, mandate may not be the, the most effective type of policy actually conducted in ASEAN because even though we have mandated ASEAN member states to do something, uh, we still are, um, are limited by the no intervention principle in which the, there is no sanction, meaning to say we cannot sanction those member states who do not do uh, what uh, are mandated by, for them. So I think, uh, I think uh, one way to look at it is to explore the other policy types, inducement, capacity building, and uh, uh, mostly I'll, I'll talk a little about the symbolic policy or the hortatory policy. All right, uh, next please. Now, so looking at the report and also uh, uh, from all the presentations from the uh, presenters, uh, amazing presenters today, uh, I think these are some suggestions for um, uh, to fill the room for improvement here. The first is to involve more policy actors, uh, media, as we as we know, as we understand, is a very powerful agent in agenda setting. So, in full, in engaging them is um, it might be challenging because, as we know, uh, media can be very can uh, can put a, a, um, a high pressure on us uh, policymakers. But media is also a very uh, powerful agent. Like I said, in agenda setting, they they have the power to bring. Um, uh, um, a matter, an issue into the public's opinion and also to share public's opinion. So uh, looking at the media and how it plays, for example, in terms of um, shaping public's opinion on um, um, uh, in, um, violence against women or children, uh, I, I search on the, uh, for example, news media and research on news media and um, uh, their news on sexual violence, I think some, the diction used in news media, although we have definitely improved so much in the last 10, uh, say 10 years or uh, even a couple of decades, that um, the diction used in the news media are still quite inappropriate and pejorative in nature. Let's say uh, to, 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 uh, to report on rape, for example, they use the word digagahi, um, sorry for the for those who don't speak Bahasa Indonesia, but all I can say that this the, this uh, choice of words or this diction is not a, uh, they're not appropriate, and they even uh, represent something wrong the uh, 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 wrong imagination of what violence is, uh, sexual violence is. Uh, like for example, Gadis Belia is uh, they, it uh, resembles like um, someone who has this sexual attraction and that drives the, the opinion somehow that it is okay. So uh, media needs to be involved in here to uh, actually represent the, the um, and to shape the public opinion about violence, sexual violence, for example, against women and children in this case, uh, by uh, employing what we call as gender sensitive journalism. So I think one role that ACWC can play here is to engage uh, media and, and through capacity building towards a more gender sensitive uh, journalism. And this can also be done even through curriculum in uh, say the uh, communication uh, studies or commu communication and media studies. So uh, ACWC will have a lot of uh, fronts 
uh, through higher education institutions to actually uh, work on these things. And the last, uh, the second one, the second policy actors, actually uh, there are two, but I combine them into one. And it has been mentioned also uh, by our uh, uh, presenters before, is to include research and CSO community to engage, uh, uh, to have a stronger engagement to them. I think it's mentioned also in the Forum Asia report. It also, it has also been mentioned by other speakers that, for example, uh, we, we still lack of empirical research in this area and uh, still lacking even further in publication. So I think there is a very dire need for um, uh, think tank and also more research in the publication on this. And um, uh, for example, uh, a research that could very well um, push uh, the, the uh, uh, more engagement with the ASEAN member states, as I mentioned, mandate may not work very effectively in ASEAN context, but maybe inducement and symbolic policy or hortatory policy can do, and through uh, soft diplomacy and peer pressure, indexing, indexing for evaluation, indexing like, so for example, index of um, um, kids friendly states or uh, indexing for uh, safe and secure women states, for example. Uh, this kind of indexing can uh, it doesn't only work for evaluation, but it can also serve to create incentive for change uh, by means of peer pressure by, uh, between the, the, the member states, because then we will see who's doing better to us, and that's uh, peer pressure. And uh, one, one last, uh, suggestion or idea for probably is to create a one name campaign because this is this is very powerful as we can see for example we learn from the me too movement in the united states and also all over the world right now that this one name campaign can uh, help us focus our efforts although you know, despite of the interpretation of it but um it, it helps us to be more efficient in terms of our uh, advocacy on this. So to go through this, we need uh, some sort of identity building and uh, to, to work with interest groups to create more pressure to each government, to each member, uh, ASEAN member state to work towards this uh, issue and make them priority uh, issues in their agenda, uh, in the government's agenda. All right, I think uh, that will be all, and I hope I'm not uh, speaking more than 15 minutes. I, I am very much looking forward to listening to your comments or questions. Uh, these are the uh, references that I used uh, for this uh, presentation that you can uh, download for, uh, freely, the indexes that I mentioned before, and also the study on uh, the diction in, that is used in news media. I'll read, I read send the stage to Iburita. Thank you very much for the uh, time. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ibu Agustina, for your uh, very interesting uh, uh, speech, uh, especially when you mentioned also about the how involving more policy actors in the, the work in Asian. So, uh, so we already have uh, all of the panelists presentation and we still have about uh, a half hour about 30 minutes left uh, for uh, for all of the the rest agenda uh, including the Q&A and then also for uh, the closing uh, remarks later uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask the the facilitator, the organizer from the uh, ASEAN Studies Center uh, to collect all of the... Yes, now we already have uh, a lot of questions and comment and we would like to uh, look at it and then ask the, the panelists to give a short uh, uh, answer about, uh, about that. The first... Uh, Question is from Gading Gumilang Putra, uh, and then uh, asking about are the refugee women and children included in the outcome indicator of the ACWC or any other ASEAN human rights framework? Uh, I think this is a very interesting uh, question from Gading Gumilang. Do, uh, do we have a, a comment on that? 
Okay. And what will be your recommendation to increase the protection space for refugee women and children in the Southeast Asia, where often they are excluded from the national framework? So I think this is a very important uh, question uh, for the, especially for the ACWC representative and the ICER course, if you can. Uh, can. Uh, I, I would like to invite uh, uh, Madam Danti and Madam Yu Yun. Uh, so, who's, uh, Madam Danti, you have to share. Yes. Thank you very much for the questions as well as comments for Mas Gading Gumi Langkutra. There's a question about refugee women and children included in the outcome indicators. Uh, if we look back into the mandates and uh, function of the ACWC, uh, there is no specific mention of the refugees, women or children, but uh, it is represented by the wording on the uh, vulnerable. I, I like to read it. To advocate, to advocate on behalf of women and children, especially the most vulnerable and marginalized. So it can be also concluded that when you talk about refugee women and children, they are in such a situation that that can be regarded as vulnerable group as well. But we don't really spell it out in our indicator uh, as refugee women and children. So if you like to ask whether it is specified, uh, no, no it's, it's not specified in our indicators, but on the other hand, we, uh, we, we mention it as included as the most vulnerable and marginalized group. That is my comment on the uh, question by Gading Gumbuta. Thank you, uh, Madam Danti. Uh... And you have the floor to uh, Madame Yuyum, please. You have the floor, sir. You have the floor, Madame Yuyum. Oh, I think Madame Fadila, Madame Yuyum, do you have a unstable connection? Uh, Thank you for I'm losing. Okay, Ibu Danti already mentioned about the indicator, uh, but for the implementation, after we have the, if I would like to inform you about the on the in the context of children immigration, I think uh, now we still ongoing process to develop the regional plan, plan of action that more specific on the uh, uh, areas how we can improve in future related with the children issues in the context of uh, migration that's i will to share with you but this is not final yet because we still are discussing and uh in uh in the technical working group to make a better regional plan of action and then can implement by the uh, ASEAN member state that that's you want to see in future and then I hope also you are as part of the TSO to working with them and we can also collaborate together in future to protect the our children right related with the issue of refuge I think that's my answer Iburita thank you thank you thank you very much uh, Madam Yuyum I give the floor now to um, Madam Wahyuningum please uh, thank you very much for the question. The word or the term refugee has rarely entered official document, as you know, in ASEAN. But uh, it it is there in the um, post-2015 um, ASEAN Health and Development uh, for a particular population uh, section. And also it enters uh, the, the document from SCWC on migration children. And for writer, we have not been able to include the term, but rather uh, uh, put them, put this category of population into our activity related to inclusive education to address the need of education for 
uh, children, refugees, as well as on the on the frame of uh, mixed migration. So the fact that the term still very sensitive for number of member states in ASEAN, but I think number of institutions uh, try to address uh, some of the needs from the perspective of health, from the perspective of movement, like in migration, and from the perspective of education. So uh, I hope more and more um, uh, receptive and acceptance uh, from the ASEAN member state on, on the on the issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Liu Yung. Well, you room. Sorry. Now uh, we will look at uh, more questions. If you still have, yes. Uh, uh, thank you. This is a question from Helga Johanna Simatupang. Thank you for the question. Uh, oh, as well, as as we all know, before COVID-19 existed, domestic violence was already one of the greatest human rights violations. To be concerned in many countries, the law is not on women's side. Then, reports of gender-based violence in many countries have increased since the lockdown started on March this year. In the case of Asian, is or are there any regional mechanisms developed about this issue? Is that all? Okay. And finally, how how do ACWC or ICER support its implementation at the national and local level? So I think this is very clear, the question. So I would like to invite again uh, uh, ACWC representative, uh, Madam Danti, uh, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> With regard to the uh, impact of the COVID-19 to women and children, uh, ACWC has had a workshop, um, if I'm not mistaken, on the 5th of June 2020 uh, to discuss on the, uh, to address the issues of the gender-based violence uh, impacted by the COVID-19. Uh, all of the states have shared the reports. And what I can conclude is that uh, all of the member states have already put in place a mechanism to address the needs of the women and children who are victims of violence uh, during the lockdown. Uh, for instance, in Cambodia, uh, uh, the, the government of Cambodia, in partnership with CSO, they also uh, conduct, they also prepared the shelters for the women and children victims of violence, a uh, uh, strategy that they did. And then in Indonesia, we also a uh, member of the task force, of the uh, COVID-19 task force. Uh, the Indonesian government also uh, set up the protocols in how to prevent and handling the cases of violence against women during the lockdown. And then from Lao PDR, for instance, they inform on the setting up of the hotlines uh, made available to response related to the COVID-19 pandemic as well as the cases of domestic violence. And then in Malaysia, for instance, they informed us that the government had dedicated hotline to provide counseling services to women and children victims of domestic violence, uh, as well as other countries also prepared the one-stop service established to address the gender-based violence and provide child care services. Uh, that is an example in Myanmar. And then the Philippines informed online platforms such as social media uh, being used to get information on securing assistance from the police and access legal and health services. So in Singapore as well, they also uh, prepared the service, uh, public and private and people service, remain operational, including ensuring access to crisis center for victims of abuse and violence. And Thailand, they also report an establishment of hotline centers 
and one stop service and Vietnam also established a 24 hour service. So after more, uh, most of the member states uh, they had reported uh, during the workshop on the fifth of June 2020, they already prepared all the strategies and mechanism to address this uh, issue of violence against women and children during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. I think that's all I can share, Burita. Thank you, um, Madam Dante. Uh, so, Madam uh, Liyum, are you uh, have uh, also a comment on this question? Please, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam Rita. Actually, what Dante already mentioned about the, our uh, commitment from the ASEAN member state. And also, firstly, uh, I forgot the name, but we have the declaration. Uh, from the commitment from the leader in ASEAN related with the issue of the COVID. And then uh, some sort itself, they have developed their declaration. I've tried to look in the, my computer for their document, but I'm not found yet. But we uh, under the some sort, we focus on the issues of their uh, children and also the women actually related with the uh, COVID because we know uh, the increased number of violence uh, about uh, uh, violence on women and children during the COVID. That's why we also mentioned by Ibu Danti where they have discussed on that and we update what the ASEAN member state uh, uh, respond for the COVID. That, that from my side. Thank you, Ibu Rita. Thank you, Madam. Uh, uh, I would like to invite Madam Wahimiro. Do you have uh, also uh, like to ask him to to respond to the question, please. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah. At the moment, uh, I, ASEAN has established a number of working groups in relation to pandemic, uh, which uh, address the current pandemic that we are uh, uh, facing and also the future pandemic. There is a, a very long name, but there are three mechanisms uh, of institutions uh, deal with these kind of issues. Um, and also a number of the, uh, statements. Uh, I, I think what uh, perhaps if, uh, if uh, what Bu Yuyum is referring is the joint statement of the ASEAN uh, Minister Meeting on Social Welfare and Development uh, addressing the, to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, including for women and children. Um, for the ITER, we did not monitor, uh, as, an, as a regional organization, we did not uh, monitor uh, the implementation of uh, this mechanism or rather uh, how the performance of member state in relation to respecting uh, human rights. But individually, we monitor the situation like my, like ICER Indonesia, we monitor um, uh, how a st member state respond to uh, COVID-19. Based on that uh, uh, monitoring, we suggest number of uh, approaches. So, for instance, when uh, ICER come up with the uh, press statement in relation to COVID-19 and the current uh, process of developing the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery uh, Framework, so we use that kind of data to suggest uh, positive uh, uh, responses on addressing uh, the situation. So that is that is why we managed to ICER Indonesia managed to include. Uh, number of uh, suggestions to ASEAN, including how to deal with the uh, digital rights, uh, how to deal with those who uh, deprive uh, 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 that that freedom has been de deprived, like person who are in prison and 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 migrant refugees, and also we have submitted the suggestion in relation to. Um, portable health uh, uh, coverage for migrant workers uh, as one of the uh, uh, tangible uh, response to address the lack of access to social uh, security for migrant workers. Uh, we also address number of things uh, in relation under the uh, safeguarding dignity rights and uh, equality in the recovery plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Madam Bayu Ningrum. Now, I think we still have one one last question. Uh, all right, thank you. This is the question from Alrene 
Sapta Saragi. Thank you. Uh, the question is, is there any opportunity for CSO or NGO in Indonesia who work on related issues uh, such as child rights, child protection, particularly refugees, to contribute in one of the ASEAN working group? And how is the procedure? I think uh, this is a very good question, interesting. Hopefully that uh, our representative uh, from ACWC or ICER can... Oh, this is the question about the ACWC, especially for the uh, children, right? Please. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I give the floor to uh, Madam Yuyu. Okay. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I think, uh, what were the patient Ibu? Think it again, please. Is there any opportunity for CSO? Ah, this is the question. Okay. Yeah, this is very, okay. very Actually, close to you. Uh, Okay, okay. Actually, for the opportunity for the CSO NGO in Indonesia to work with the issue of child rights, uh, in the context of refugees, uh, I already share the draft of the RTA and also the declaration you can find in the website uh, and the Google also is easier. But for the RTA, actually, I share the draft with the, my networking in the Alliance for the uh, Protection. I just need the input and comment from them. But until now, they don't have yet the input and comment on that, but I say uh, to give the 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 from the side of the NGOs. But maybe you are uh, the CSO. Your CSO is not part of the alliance itself. But if you need the the draft document to give your input and comment, I'm please welcome for that because now we still uh, the flow for the draft of the uh what is the the mpa itself and then we involve the un agency for example unitem unhcr iom and the others i think we have the expert in that to discuss about the uh uh working group for the technical working group uh related with the uh rpa on the student in the contact immigration please if you need the uh, want to contribute for the our day draft i can share with you the draft and please give the input for me and after that i can share also in our technical working group uh for the next few things i think that's also for my side ibu Rita. thank you so much thank you so much uh madam uh, uh i think this is our uh last question uh that responded all by the by the panelists, not all of them, but I uh, I thank the, all of the participants for all of the questions and comments that they write in the chatting room. Unfortunately, we have a limited time, but I'm sure that uh, uh, all of the comments uh, well noted by all of us. And I, I just uh, would like to uh, mention that the RPA that mentioned by Ibu Yuyu mean that regional plan of action yes thank you so uh so i think we we would like to uh conclude our our uh panel uh, discussion or what you call as a public lecture and then before the closing i would like to invite the closing uh, statement or remark from the uh, all of the panelists here that can be uh, uh close our sessions and this is a very remarkable moment for us uh, so I would like to invite first for for the final statement for two or three minutes, uh, and I give the floor to uh, Madam Rachel from Forum Asia. You have the floor. Um, thank you so much, Iburita. Um, so uh, I I would like to convey my appreciation for the inputs, no suggestions, um, as well as feedback to our report. Um, and I also would like to uh, highlight that the intentions um, of the creation of the report um, is not only to document but also we, um, on behalf of the society want uh, the SWC to strive better to be able to uh, provide protections um, for women and children. Um, and therefore, in doing so, it would be really um, 
important for the bodies um, to provide um, like more updated uh, information to the public. Um, and I cannot agree more with um, uh, the previous speakers, Ma Gustina, um, on um, the need to have like more um, journal, academic journal, as well as uh, news uh, about ACWC. Uh, because uh, I think the presence of ACWC is very important um, to address um, the uh, human rights um, issues uh, that being faced by women and women in the region. Um, and as um, representative of ACWC mentioned, um, that uh, the mandates of ACWC is to protect all women and children, regardless of the background. Um, 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 and a condition. Uh, I think it would be uh, really good uh, to translate that commitment into um, other actions such as uh, having guidelines uh, on the protection of women, human rights defenders, because we see the distinct civic space, more women, including women journalists, are being um, intimidated, facing harassment. We also uh, thought that it is very important for ACWC um, to translate the SMEs commitment um, on post uh, pandemic recovery plan to making sure that women and children that are most vulnerable are protected. Um, and this has been um, uh, present, presented by other uh, women's um, rights uh, regional commissions um, that a public uh, statement um, or a further uh, public analysis on how to incorporate gender transformative approach um, in the pandemic response uh, can be created um, in a timely manner. Um, and with that, uh, I would like to end my comments. I, I really hope that I really hope that um, we can further strengthen the engagement between SWC and civil society organizations so that we can thrive better together. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the very remarkable closing statement, Madam Rahel. Now I give the floor for uh, closing statement to Excellency Madam Sri Danti Anwar. You have the floor, Madam. Uh, thank you very much. Once again, I would like to thank Podomaya for sharing with us the recommendations for women of ACWC. Uh, I hope that the recommendations and the findings can also be shared, not only among the Indonesian representatives, but also to other member states. And hopefully uh, in the future, we can have also other panelists from other member states not only from the Indonesian uh, representatives. And then lastly, uh, of course, in the future, we like uh, ACWC and Forum Asia especially to have a stronger and uh, long lasting relationship. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Danti, for Thank your you, final statement. Is that okay? Okay. Now I would like to give the floor for the closing uh, remark uh, to the Madam Yu, uh, the Indonesian representative to the ACWC for uh, children's rights. You have the floor, Madam. Okay. Thank you, Burita. Uh, in the end, I would like to say thank you for the Forum Asia for the assessment report for the ACWC 10 I think this is we uh, will give the rich information about the SAWC done after 10 years and what we, we should be uh, next forward for the future and to improve the, 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 the capacity and the capability of the SAWC in future. And also, please also engage with the other uh, SAWC reps because uh, as as my SAWC children is many times I'm joined with the Forum Asia activities, discussion and everything, but less of the other uh, representative is not be part of uh, Forum Asia activities. 
and also how also we get support from the Forum Asia and also the JSO to make uh, what is uh, SCWC work is implement better in future and uh, JSO also not just waiting for the SCWC but how they can also support us, engage with us and looking for us. If they didn't know the representative, they should looking for that not just waiting it's difficult because they're busy no 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 this is the our advocacy together we should working together and strengthen each other not only just waiting that's uh i think uh thank you again for the forum asia for the findings and also i hope in future also that ibu Dante say we can also uh invite all the scwc from 10 member countries to be part of the discussion uh, with the 10 decade of SCWC as a spend report. Thank you again for the Forum Asia and return back to the Ibu, Madam Rita. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Yun, for your final remarks. And I would like to now to invite uh, Madam Excellency, Madam Yun Wahan Yuningrum for her uh, closing remark. Uh, the floor is yours, Madam. Uh, thank you, uh, Ibu Rita. Um, as history tell us uh, in this region that the role of civil society and think tank has been very, very important, very useful to move the agenda of human rights forward. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, in the last 10 years, uh, civil society continued to push uh, the institution to do better on their mandates and even seek for more uh, mandates uh, for the bodies to uh, to promote and protect human rights, especially to protect. I think that's the, the agenda of many civil society in the region to both uh, ACWC and, and ICHA. Uh, I, would, I, I would say that without civil society, um, the body like ICHA and ACWC will never be established. So uh, please continue to do that and please send your inputs, criticism, comments on the work of the bodies, uh, uh, CWC and, AC and, and ICHER. Uh, I think uh, that uh, is a big contribution to the region. And, and if we see this uh, development as a process, so uh, your uh, reports, your uh, uh, contribution so far, had been uh, pushing to uh, the point that uh, ICHA and SCWC should become. Uh, please continue to imagine, uh, continue to vision, because we uh, rely on uh, your um, uh, supports. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Mayuning Room, for the closing remark. Now I would like to invite uh, uh, our I think our host, yeah, um, um, Madam Agustina uh, from the ASEAN Study Center from the Gajah Mada University to give her closing remark. You have the floor, Madam. Thank you, Gurita. Uh, once again, thank you all for all the speakers and also our participants today. It has been a very fruitful discussion, I believe. Uh, I think briefly I would say, um, and maybe that doesn't represent uh, a science study center, but personally as an academician, I would say that I think we all uh, understand that funding is always going to be limited and decision making in ASEAN is always going to be incremental. But uh, I think from our discussion today, we also learned that there are definitely other fronts that we can explore to go ahead with policy change and policy action. That will be all, Murita. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Agustina, for the closing uh, remark. So uh, I realize now that we also have uh, a participant, you know, um, Mr. Rafendi Jamin. This is he is the first uh, Indonesian representative to ICER, uh, and then I believe a very uh, a, a good moment for us that we have a connection now and then he would like to uh, give the comment statement that we can read here uh, that's uh Lafendi jamin said that congrats to uh, forum asia and the asian study center of 
Gajah Mada University for hosting this webinar. Well, I am proud to see almost all panelists from the ASEAN Human Rights Bodies plus the moderator are uh, Indonesian strong and powerful women. And, but as Asian citizen, I would love to see a, a well-balanced panelist, moderator coming from other Asian member states, especially in celebrating 10 years of ACWC. Is that the, is that all? Sorry, I cannot, uh, I cannot see all of the comments. But yes, that's uh, all the comment that we thanks for thanks uh, Rafendi uh, for uh, your comment. I think it well noted by the all of us here. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, SCWC chair and uh, the the other uh, member state from other Asian member state uh, uh, F or oh, unable to, to join uh, this uh, momentable uh, uh, event. I, I think it's uh, well noted by the by all of the all of us. And so this is a remarkable moment for uh, the ACWC uh, on the 10, 10 years commemoration. And I think that we already uh, uh, well noted all of the the key findings and recommendations uh, from the uh, Forum Asia report. And also the panel also uh, highlight the, the important mandate of the, the ACWC, in particular uh, to advocate the, uh, on behalf of women and children, uh, the, uh, especially the most vulnerable and marginalized and encourage uh, the ASEAN member states to improve their situation uh, uh, in uh, their uh, their situation in the, uh, the ASEAN member states. So, uh, I believe this is very relevant because we are talking about the the, the role of uh, think tank, CSO, and uh, uh, other relevant uh, stakeholder in advocacy work of the ACWC uh, in order to strengthen the. SCWC uh, work in the next decade. I think this is uh, 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 what I can uh, highlight uh, in our uh, closing uh, session. And I thank all of the the, the participants and especially the uh, excellent panelists for all of the contribution and uh, all of uh, the presentation and joining us. This is a very uh, a very remarkable moment. Thank you uh, very much, and I would like to close uh, this panel and hand over uh, to uh, the organizer, uh, Ms. Padilla. You have uh, I hand over the floor to you. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for the amazing moderator, Iburita. You're doing a great job. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Rita for moderating the public lecture. It was truly an insightful presentation and an answer discussion. It's an honor for us to have you and also the honorable speakers for today's public lecture and report launch to commemorate 10th year ASEAN Commission on the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Women and Children. I'm sure we all have our takeaways on today's event. Um, all right, this concludes today's public lecture. Thank you again for all the participants for joining us. Um, before I close the public lecture, I would also like to announce several exciting news for all the participants. First announcement is that we invite you to submit your op-ed for today's event. Your article will be published on our official website. And if you are interested, please write opinion or reflections about ACWC 10th year um, commemorations. And you can write your articles around 1,000 to 1,200 words. And don't forget to provide the citations and send it to ascnsc.ugm.ac.id. And our time, our team will contact you to publish your article. The next announcement um, is that ASEAN Study Center uh, also welcome you to join ASEAN Study Center Monograph 2020 with the team of Keep the Small Strong ASEAN Member States Response to the Pandemic. 
The detailed information regarding the ASEAN Trade Center Monograph 2020 has been published in our website, aesc.visipol.ugm.ac.id, and our Instagram at ASCUGM. Finally, if you would like to collect your e-certificate, here's the link, and you can claim your e-certificate by fulfilling the detailed information in the QR code or the link that is provided in the screen. Um, we would also be rolling out more webinars in the coming weeks and months. We hope to see you at our future events. And I'm Fadila Rahma signing off. Thank you so much for being here and tuning in to our discussions and have a great day. Thank you.